Cardinals and Fox Sports Midwest are proud to once again participate in the national moment of remembrance as we pause to remember the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. We ask that you please join us now in this moment of silence as a collective, unified expression of gratitude to the heroes who lost their lives while protecting the freedoms we enjoy today. Thank you. Please remain standing for the singing of God Bless America and our national anthem. Performing God Bless America today, we have the central voices from Central Elementary School in Union, Missouri. They're under the direction of Kelly Beiser.
Memorial Day in the Midwest as our nation pauses to remember friends and family, colleagues and strangers killed in service of our United States. Here in St. Louis, the cemetery at Jefferson Barracks, where soldiers have been laid to rest dating back to the Mexican-American War of 1827. On this Memorial Day, we salute the troops. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball is presented by Sanderson Ford. We are under the arch and on the banks of the Mississippi. Cardinals fans out in force on this Memorial Day holiday. The best record in the National League, but the Red Hot Diamondbacks are here. And we are set for baseball this afternoon on Fox Sports Arizona. And good afternoon from Bush Stadium. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume, Bob Brenly along the way, and our very best wishes on this Memorial Day to Diamondback fans everywhere. First of three today against the St. Louis Cardinals, your pitching matchup. Carlos Martinez for the Redbirds and on the mound for the Diamondbacks. Bob, he has been outstanding the last four starts. It's Chase Anderson. Yeah, with some of the struggles in the starting rotation, you wondered who was going to step forward and take on that role of ace. Well, it's been Chase Anderson over his last four starts. He's been outstanding. You look beyond the numbers. He's been great in the month of May over the course of his career. He rarely gives up earned runs anymore. This guy looks like he wants to be the ace at the top of the rotation. Well, if you're going to beat these Cardinal teams, you have to do the little things right, and the Diamondbacks have been clutch, if nothing else, this year. Boy, have they ever. They're third in Major League Baseball in batting average with two outs, first in two-out RBIs. They're just getting it done. Uh, it's very uplifting for the offense and very demoralizing for the team that's out there on defense when that happens. First of three against the team with the best record in the National League. Paul Goldschmidt and company here for three games against the St. Louis Cardinals. And we are set for baseball in front of a jam-packed crowd at Bush Stadium on this Memorial Day Monday. Back with first pitch coming up on Fox Sports Arizona. Mitch Harris, who went to the Naval Academy, we asked him before the ball game what this day means to him. Well, it starts with the first word is is memory. It's it's the guys who aren't with us. It's the guys who uh, didn't come home, and it's the guys who put themselves in front of everyone else. 
Um, a lot of guys that would love to be here and aren't, and uh, we can thank them for that. And we do on this Memorial Day here under the arch in St. Louis. Welcome to Diamondbacks Baseball. Steve Berthune, Bob Brentley, and Todd Walsh with you. Cardinals holding a three-and-a-half game lead over the Cubs atop the NL Central. And the Redbirds an outstanding 15-5 and five at home this year here at Bush Stadium. And today they begin a nine-game homestand with three against Ender and Ciarte and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, if you're allergic to the color red, this is not the place to be on this Memorial Day. Cardinal Nation out in full effect, most wearing red. Those that aren't wearing red are sitting in red seats, so everything in this ballpark is red. On the mound for the Cardinals, your Arizona Ford starting pitcher, Carlos Martinez, 23-year-old right-hander. Here's Diamondback hitting coach Turner Ward. He's got good enough stuff where, you know, he's got the sink, you know, he's got the run, you know, and he's got, of course, a slider and a curve uh, changeup. So, I mean, he has the pitches. When young pitchers like that kind of put that together, you know, they, they make it difficult on uh, hitters. So, you know, us being more disciplined is a, a, always definitely a key off a guy like this. Martinez, who worked out of the bullpen for the most part last season, now trying to find his way as a starting pitcher in this Cardinals rotation. Ender and Ciarte leads it off for the Diamondbacks. Lance Barksdale, our plate umpire. And Enders lifts the 1-0 pitch up in the very shallow left center field. Matt Holliday has it quickly one down. The numbers on Martinez, 4-2 and two with the ERA just over 4 so far. Nine appearances, eight starts. He can get erratic and lose his command from time to time. He uh, leads the league, in fact, Bob, in wild pitches. Yeah, especially when he tries to overthrow the ball. This is a guy with a big arm pitching out of the bullpen for the Cardinals. His average fastball velocity was nearly 97 miles an hour, but the Cardinals and Carlos Martinez have found that when he throttles back and pitches in the low 90s, he has much better command. Yeah, he throws gas up there. He'll be mid to upper 90s most of the day. His attention, it seems, can wander out there on the mound. And Mike Matheny says the consistency of him controlling his focus is going to be one of his big challenges. Mark Trumbo in the two hole this afternoon lifts that one up into the right field seats. And it's a ball and a strike to Mark, who's in there at 266 and six home runs. Warm day here in St. Louis. Mostly sunny skies. Not quite the humidity you see here in midsummer, but uh, we're sort of right on the edge of it. You can feel it starting to creep in here. And the cloud cover is very welcomed on this afternoon because otherwise it would be steaming hot here. Trumbo, as he's done a lot lately, chasing one down and away, and it's even two balls and two strikes. Mark has four homers this month. Here you get a shot of the arch in downtown St. Louis, the brand new. Cardinal Nation, Ballpark Village, just beyond left center field here. And Trumbo strikes out. That is inside Ballpark Village, a new facility here. It's only been around a couple of years. Right across the street, they have restaurants, they have lounges, they have rooftop seats, in mm -hmm. fact, for Cardinals Nation. Yeah, it took them a while to get their uh, Cardinal Nation baseball village built right across uh, from the ballpark here. But now that it is in place, it is quite an attraction. Fans coming very early this morning to partake. Paul Goldschmidt. That pitch is in there for strike one. Goldie third in the National League with a 333 batting average. Tied for second with 12 homers. Second behind only Bryce Harper and OPS. But he's down. No balls and two strikes. Goldie has played 10 career games here at Bush Stadium at St. Louis. All starts. A 282 hitter in this ballpark with three home runs. He's got 11 RBIs in 10 games here. Base hit. Take a look at the lineup. On this Memorial Day Monday for Chip Hales, Arizona Diamondback. Oh, what's new? Another two out base hit, this time by Paul Goldschmidt. Ender and Ciarte leading off in center field. Mark Trumbo in right. Goldie at first base. David Peralta out in left field. Yasmani Tomas at third base. You can see what he's done during his eight game hit streak. Chris Owings at second base. Tuffy goes to wish doing the catching. Nick Ahmed at shortstop and right hander Chase Anderson on the mound. Two out base runner for David Peralta. 
in the cleanup spot today. AJ Pollock getting the afternoon off. And once again, Martinez throws strike one. Peralta just under 250 now. Four homers he has driven in 21. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts in the win over the Cubs yesterday. Water one. Carlos Martinez blessed with great velocity both with the four seam fastball and a wicked sinking two seamer that can be a very good swing and miss pitch for him. For a lot of pitchers that two seam fastball is a ground ball pitch but Martinez just throws it so hard. That it's been a good strikeout pitch for him. And the velocity says Yadier Molina allows Martinez to get aggressive out there and attack the hitter. And then when he's ahead in the count, like right now, he has been putting guys away with a slider and a changeup. One and two to Peralta. Goldie, there he goes. Got a huge jump, and Peralta looks at strike three. Well, Goldie started running when Martinez was still in the set position. Got an enormous jump. David didn't want to swing, and he got the call strike. Chase Anderson now. Chin-ups for Chase on Memorial Day. afternoon better and better seemingly every time out this season sensational all month long and today he makes his first career appearance against the Cardinals his catcher this afternoon Tuffy goes I need to use all three pitches you know we got a really quality hitting team here and um, one of the best fundamental hitting teams I think in the league if not all of baseball and, and so I think we need to use all of our pitches and um, just mix it up a lot what about his confidence right now I think he's feeling really good, you know, but he's not overly confident. I know that he knows he's got to continue to do what he's been doing and um, just keep working hard and continue to get better. Notice how tough he said, use all of our pitches. <laughs> it's a team effort out there. Colton Wong steps to the left-hand batter's box. He has Monty Tomas in a couple of steps on the grass at third, and there's ball one from Chase coming off his first win of the year last Wednesday at Miami. Colton Wong having a big year offensively. The Cardinals second baseman top 10 in the National League in hitting. At 315, he's got five homers. The numbers on Chase Anderson this year. Four hits, eight innings against the Marlins. Had a chance to put up his first ever shutout. Could not retire any of the three he faced in the ninth. So the eight innings, a career high for Chase. And Wong belts it into the right field corner. Trumbo short arms it. And Colton Wong is in at second with his ninth double. He has been one of the most consistent bats in this St. Louis lineup all year long, and he just saw why. Pitch on that inside part of the plate, Wong very quick inside. Shot that one past Mark Trumbo all the way to the wall in right field. 
And this is the really dangerous hitter in this Cardinals lineup right here. Matt Carpenter, sixth in the National League with a 3.23 batting average. He is fifth in OPS. And Carpenter this year has been a little more of a power bat for St. Louis. He homered in their win yesterday at Kansas City. He's got eight on the year. He has homered five times in his last 16 games, having another all-star caliber season at the plate. And a very patient hitter. He is tied for the league lead in doubles, Matt Carpenter. Top 10 in the league in runs scored and on base percentage. Tuffy talking about the Cardinals being one of the best fundamental hitting teams and by that I think he's referring to situations just like this for Matt Carpenter runner at second base nobody out in the inning his job is to try to advance that guy to third base pull the ball to the right side of the infield you see his numbers with runners in scoring position this season reinforcing what you said this guy is a threat in the middle of this lineup. He really is I believe one of the most underrated players in all of baseball Matt Carpenter he's just such a good complete all around player. But Anderson is ahead, no balls and two strikes. Jason Hayward, who they brought over in the offseason from Atlanta, had been hitting second in the order for the Cardinals, but Hayward's season has been something of a disaster here so far. So he's been dropped down and keeps getting dropped down in the batting order. Wanted to take some pressure off him, but the other reason to get Carpenter more time in the two hole this year. He had been. For a long time here, the leadoff man. But very productive batting second for Mike Bepini. And he slams the one two pitch into right. A base hit. They will stop Colton Wong at third. And the first two have reached against Chase Anderson. The lineup for Mike Bepini, St. Louis Cardinals. Top two on base already. Colton Wong at second base. Matt Carpenter at third base. Matt Holliday making his way to the plate right now. He'll be out in left field. Big Matt Adams at first base. Johnny Peralta at shortstop. Yadier Molina doing the catching. Jason Hayward out in right. Peter Borges, Valley native, playing center field. And Carlos Martinez, the right hander on the mound. So Chase Anderson in immediate trouble. He's got Wong at third. Carpenter at first. Still nobody out. And here comes Big Matt Holliday. Off to a very good start this year. Holiday hitting 314. The home runs not quite there like we're used to seeing after five straight seasons with at least 20 homers. But the on base percentage is up over 430, and a slugging is right about where it was last year. You see that guard on the front arm of uh, Matt Holiday modified a little bit. He got plunked in that left forearm a couple of days ago. Uh, has always worn that pad above the elbow, but now he's got one down on the forearm below the elbow as well. He was a late stretch from their lineup yesterday in Kansas City. Got plunked Saturday against Edinson Volquez. The ball and a strike now to Holiday. And that hit by pitch allowed him to reach base for the 40th consecutive game, only two behind Albert Pujols for the team record. Both teams a little camo in the uniforms here on this Memorial Day today. Camouflage numbers and logos on the jerseys and the caps. Nice block by Tuffy with the speedy Wong down there at third. It's two and one. You can see Tuffy's cap there with a the camo bill. Now this could be a replay of any of the. 100 pitches that Tuffy's blocked in the dirt with the runner at third base already this year. Two one pitches lifted in the air to very shallow left. Ahmed drifting out. Peralta coming in. Wong will make no effort to tag, and that's the first out. Well, we're in St. Louis, and here's a look at Big City. Big Matt Adams. The left-hand hitter. 
having a lukewarm season at best at the plate, hitting just over 240 with four homers. The OPS, though, is a career low. And the bat, you could almost argue the numbers to back this up has been in something of a decline the last couple of years. And now it's starting to get to the point where folks here are getting a little nervous. Double play candidate if Chase Anderson can execute a pitch down at the bottom of that strike zone, get a grounder on one of his infielders. They're on the corners with a one out, and there's strike one. Although Adams doesn't hit into a lot of double plays, only one so far this season. I think it's because he has so much lift in that swing, he hits a lot more fly balls than ground balls. You can see last 10 games sitting under 230. And Adams isn't getting on base, isn't really mashing the ball like they would prefer to see him. The on base percentage is only in the 270s. The slugging's down a whopping 85 points from last year and for a guy like this that's a big number. One or one. Although Adams did have a good day yesterday. Cardinals beat the Royals at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City six to one. Adams had two doubles. That was St. Louis's only win in that series. He went into that ball game stuck in a brutal six for 52 slump. And he's up there now with a 1 1 count. Ground ball. Chris Owings. Nick Ahmed will get the force. They can't turn two and Wong scores the game's first run. Hit a bit too slowly to second base. And the Cardinals take a 1 0 lead. Chris Owen shifted over into that hole between first and second ever so slightly. Had to go a long way to get to that ball. Only get the lead runner at second base as the Cardinals take an early 1 0 lead. That brings up the shortstop. With two down, it's Johnny Peralta, the veteran, having a good offensive season. He's right about 300 for the year with six homers. First pitch swing and a bouncer to Ahmed. They go the short way for the force on Adams and Chase Anderson is through the first for the Cardinals take a one nothing lead. Arizona is brought to you in part by Cox Gigablast. How will you live the gig life? By Lone Butte Casino. You're in for more winning moments at Lone Butte Casino. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new legendary Buttery Jack from Jack in the Box today. Diamondbacks winners of six of their last seven. And today back on the road in St. Louis. Continuing a tour of the National League Central Division after taking two of three from the Cubs. 
at Chase Field. A hot day on this Memorial Day in St. Louis. As Yasmani Tomas gets up there and belts the first pitch he sees into center field. Yasmani Tomas aboard to lead off the second. He's now hit in nine straight games. Tomas has been doing really well against righties this year. Everybody else on that list is the left handed hitter, with the exception of Yasmani Tomas hitting 368 against righties this season. The slumping Chris Owings now at 235 and two homers. CO still trying to get it going here after that seven game hit streak he had earlier this month came to an end. And CO up there right now, stuck in an 0 for 18. His batting average for the year has dropped more than 30 points over his last five games. Hard to second. Long. Peralta. Adams. They roll it. Two down. too easy. You talk about a Taylor made double play lead the second baseman right into his flip to the shortstop who had all his momentum going across the bag. That's about as easy as it gets. So despite giving up a lead off single Martinez gets two outs in the inning on only three pitches and here's Tuffy goes to which. Tuffy 231 and the homer he's driven in 13. At that second career big league homer Saturday against the Cubs. And he has now hit safely in six straight games and nine of his last ten. This was the Tuffy Tater as it's uh, being called on the streets. <laughs> well, the Cubs have to wonder what they did to upset Tuffy Gosowitz. He's got two career home runs, one at Wrigley and one at Chase, both against Cubs. He's a Cub killer. <laughs> well, he always has been. <laughs> Came into the ball game yesterday as a late defensive replacement did not have it at bat. Diamondbacks got a big win yesterday to win that series and send us out on this latest road trip with some good mojo. Easy to third. Carpenter has it. And that's the end of the top of the second inning. Diamondbacks trail at one nothing on this Memorial Day in St. Louis. Field Sunday June 21st Father's Day against the Padres for his $10,000 or 10,000 dads received $10,000. No, we're just kidding. Uh, first 10,000 dads received the D-backs dad. We, you do get a T-shirt. Boy, did I botch this one. Courtesy of Audi. And then on Saturday July 4th, a big time fireworks spectacular. Following the D-backs and the Rockies, it's all brought to you by Gila River Casino. So you don't want to miss any holiday game this year. Buy tickets now 
dbacks.com. That's June 21st, Father's Day versus the Padres. First 10,000 dads get the D-backs dad t-shirt courtesy of Audi. That's what they call a make good in the business. It's really good. <laughs> Out of here, Molina. You might be able to put that shirt on eBay and get ten thousand bucks for it. Who knows? Very valuable. Out of here, Molina. First pitch swinging, pops it up. Third base side, Ahmed and Tomas and Nikazic. One pitch, one out. During the half inning, there, Mike Matheny came out of the Cardinal dugout and had a long conversation with plate umpire Lance Barksdale and then Barksdale went out to second base to chat with his crew chief Eric Cooper and then he kind of went out to watch Chase throw those warm-ups he was counting them as he always does but but then he seemed to have a beef with something but we're not sure what yeah not sure what it could possibly be I haven't seen anything out of the ordinary so far in this ball game but uh, something obviously was bothering Mike Matheny Jason Hayward, the former Brave, really struggling in St. Louis, and the shift is on by the Diamondbacks. Three infielders, including Tomas on the right-hand side. Hayward batting under 240 so far, and only 12 RBIs in 41 games. He missed some time this weekend with what Mike Matheny said was some tightness in his left hip, but the Cardinal fans have been, to say less than thrilled, might be an understatement with Jason Hayward. Not only his struggles offensively here with the Cardinals, but the way Shelby Miller has been pitching for the Atlanta Braves uh, really makes it look like a lopsided deal right now. Yeah, they were acquired by the Cardinals from Atlanta last November, along with reliever Jordan Walden. Braves got Tyrell Jenkins and Shelby Miller. And Cardinals fans saw Miller, as Bob mentioned, almost no hit Miami about a week ago. He has been sensational so far this year in Atlanta and Hayward. Not playing every day, not hitting, not really producing. And it's not helping either the Cardinals fans are aware that the Braves will also have Miller under contractual control for three more seasons after this one. Plus, they lost Adam Wainwright for the year with a torn Achilles, so they're thinking, well, boy, we could really use Miller now. And uh, it's just not worked out. The Braves aren't giving it back. Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. You can call, but <laughs> probably not. 3 2 pitch. Goldie is there. Hard to first. Goldschmidt takes it himself and two down here in the second. And Hayward, to make matters worse, is in the final year of his contract. He will be a free agent after this season, so he'll be out there in the market. And the feeling here already, and we haven't even got to June yet, is that the Cardinals have badly lost that trade. Now, it could always turn around. Hayward, a very talented player, could have a big second half, and then they might change their tune. But right now, they're thinking that Randall Gritchick is the future in that outfield spot, and the Cardinals should just let Hayward walk away after this year. Peter Borges from Notre Dame Prep in Scottsdale. Getting the start in center field. They are without John Jay, who had wrist surgery in the offseason. And has had some complications, so Borges and Gritchick have been playing a lot of center. It's Borges in there today. And Borges finds his way into a lot of ball games that he does not start. Coming in for a defensive replacement late, the Cardinals have a tendency to take Matt Holliday out of the ball game late if they have a lead. Borges this year has hit the ball pretty well. Not hit a whole lot lately, but he's made some solid contact up there this year and has been a better hitter. A little more of a line drive hitter this year than he's shown in the past. 2 1 pitch. And there's a fly ball to right field. Easy play for Trumbo and a nice bounce back. 1 2 3 second inning for Chase Anderson. We'll go to the third at Bush Stadium. Diamondbacks trail at 1 0.
nine game hitting streak. We asked Chip Hale what's changed for Nick lately at the plate. Really the big thing is swinging at the right pitches. He's getting pitches he can handle. I mean maybe they aren't uh, prototypical strikes but they're pitches that his swing handles yeah. down in the zone um, and he's putting him in play and he's putting him in play hard. And he sure is coming off what has to be the best offensive series of his young career so far. Five hits in 13 at bats in the three games against the Cubs. Including a triple and a home run and he's up to 216 on the year. Say 216 what's the big deal. Well one long ago that was 130. So he's come a long way. One one now. Well you look at Nick's first 27 games this season he only had 10 hits one extra base hit and one run driven in. Over his last 11 games, he's got 14 base hits, three extra base hits, and has driven in seven. So quite the turnaround for Nick Ahmed in his nine-game hitting streak. Up there against Carlos Martinez, the starter today for the Cardinals. Diamondbacks with two hits so far, singles by Goldschmidt and Tomas. St. Louis took a one-nothing lead bottom first. Wong led off the game with a double. Carpenter a single. Matt Adams an RBI ground out. Yes, he went. Chris Siegel down at first, and it's two and two. I guess he did. <laughs> uh, looking down from our perch here behind home plate, I thought Nick was able to check that time, but the replay clearly showed he got the bat out there a little too far. Yeah, we have quite a view from up here. The just a beautiful ballpark, Bush Stadium. Got the ballpark village out there in left center, the arch downtown St. Louis. Three balls and two strikes. Bounce to second. Here comes Colton Wong. One away. Chase Anderson not only did he pitch brilliantly in his last start against the Marlins last week at Miami he had an RBI. So trying to keep some luck going here at the plates. Two for 14 on the year. There's a strike two and one now. Hard throwing 23 year old Carlos Martinez. He's behind on his opposite number now, three and one. Told you Martinez will get from time to time erratic and lose his command. Lose his focus out there. Gets, rushes yeah, gets in a little bit too big of a hurry especially facing guys at the bottom of the order that he thinks he should retire easily really works in a quick pace. He was a winner in his last start Wednesday against the Mets in New York six and a third scoreless gave up just four hits. A little roller to shortstop for Peralta. See that. So Martinez works at full to the first two in the inning. A couple of round ball outs, and here comes the leadoff man, Ender Inciarte. Hey, fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. I know it wasn't quite as good as Bree yesterday, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. <laughs> Bree nailed it yesterday. Oh, did she ever? Our Sanderson Ford Kidcaster, she was terrific. Bob got to take a couple of promos off. That worked out well. <laughs> Max did a great job. Yeah. Ender flied out his first time. And a couple of hits yesterday in the win over the Cubs. Jones Bunt looks at strike one. There is a nice breeze blowing through the ballpark here, keeping us cool. You can see Martinez's jersey flapping in the wind down there on the field. Sort of circulating right now, blowing right to left. Yeah, kind of hard to tell what it's going to do to balls in play down at field level. We're uh, up toward the top of the stadium. We can feel the wind a little more up here. You can see the flags just. Oh, what 
Ender chases a bad one there. Martinez has his third strikeout, and he's now set down five in a row. Diamondbacks trail the Cardinals, one nothing. high school uh, didn't do it went to Arizona to play baseball um, you know I'm just so thankful for all the guys that do go um, I think it's exciting today to see um, the, the Harris kid for the, the Cardinals who did go to Navy and went on to serve in the Navy and now he's playing professional baseball that's unheard of so that's great and uh, really proud of him and really proud of all the soldiers that are over there protecting us Chip Hill part of the great story of, of his uh, rise to Major League Baseball was going to go to the Navy guys before he decided on attending the University of Arizona. The rest, as they say, is history. You mentioned Mitch Harris of the St. Louis Cardinals, who, as you just saw, and we talked about it on Diamondbacks Live, the pregame show, out there in batting practice wearing his combat boots on this Memorial Day. Thank you, Tom. Carlos Martinez, the Cardinal pitcher, leads off the third with a base hit. Todd mentioned this was Mitch Harris, Naval Academy grad, in the combat boots during batting practice. Tough to shag flies in those things. Yeah. That's a nice look, though. Third hit for the Cardinals, and here's Colton Wong. Wong doubled and scored his first time up. Chase had a nice tidy seven pitch one two three second inning but uh, as a leadoff man aboard here in the third long now at 319 on the year got off to a very good start at the plate in April and he has accelerated that pace for May he's batting over 330 this month and he's got a nine game hitting streak right now And you know you think of Colton Wong he's still a young guy he's only 24 but you think of him as that kid that got picked off first base to end a World Series game mm -hmm. but he's now this year really started showing why he was a first round pick by the Cardinals out of the University of Hawaii he's having a great year. This is popped up behind the bag at second fighting that son is Nick Ahmed drifting out into shallow left field and he's got it for the first time. Matt Carpenter now. Yeah, I think I meant uh, multitasking. He's looking up into that sun for the fly ball. Uh, actually, right before we came on there, he took a quick peek to see where Carlos Martinez, the runner at first base, was. Probably so he could get himself prepared to maybe fire to first to try to turn it into a double play instead of just a pop up to short. I tell you what, he put on an absolute show. Over the weekend, we talked a lot about the offense, and justifiably so, as Carpenter fouls that one off. But Nick Ahmed was a human highlight reel over the weekend. 
Yeah, right here. He's backpedaling. He takes a look to see where Martinez was and then looks back up into that afternoon sky to pick up the pop up. Can't coach that. That's just instinct. You know you have a pitcher running at first base who's possibility that he might make a mistake and run all the way to second. The 0 1 misses down and in. It's a ball and a strike. Yeah, talking about Nick, we talked to the Cubs broadcasters when they came into town. And, you know, we were kind of giving them the rundown on the ball club and things to look for and things that have been really good. And we both commented about how good Nick had been defensively. And before they left town yesterday, they all stopped by the booth and said, Boy, were you right about that kid at shortstop? And it, it's an odd thing with Nick Bob. He never makes the flashy diving crazy highlight reel play. He's just so good at everything he does. And he makes the difficult plays. Carpenter lines that one like to right to Peralta in left and that's the second out. Nick Ahmed this weekend against the Cubs at Chase Field. This was a defensive clinic. Turned a double play there with a strong throw and he knew he needed one. The backhander starts another DP right there. The range in that big arm. Somebody said it, it might have been Chip Hill. He said he throws like Dan Marino. Remember Dan Marino was always had that super quick release kind of mm -hmm. not quite over the top but almost three quarters motion. Ahmed kind of throws like Dan Marino. Matt Holiday flying out his first time. Belts it to center. It backs up in Sigarte but he's got room. An eight pitch third follows a seven pitch second for Chase Anderson and through three the Diamondbacks trail the Cardinals one nothing. Memorial Day, Steve with you, Bob Brenly, and Todd Walsh with you. It's our T-Mobile game-changing players. We kind of had a head-to-head -head matchup of the left-hand version of Paul Goldschmidt this weekend with Anthony Rizzo with the Cubs. Well, the left-hand hitting Matt Carpenter, not very far away either. Both guys are, you know, mid-round picks or so, not highly touted coming out of college. Goldie at Texas State and Matt Carpenter at TCU. But, boy, since 09, they have been game-changing players. These two are among the best in the league. Mark Trumbo will lead off the fourth against Carlos Martinez. So it's Trumbo, Goldie, Peralta, two, three, and four in the Arizona fourth. Mark struck out his first time, 0 for 1. Chases, and he's down 0 and 1. Martinez has retired the last five Diamondbacks he's faced.
trying to make that full time transition now from reliever to starter. This is bounced over the mound. It's Wong behind the bag. One away. Martinez last year, 57 appearances for the Cardinals, 50 in relief. And this year he was named a to the rotation, their fifth starter during spring training. And did very well to start the year. Won his first three starts, in fact. And pitched at least six full innings every time out. However, he's had mixed results here in May. He has won only once in four starts this month. And he has gone more than five and a third just once in his last four starts. Goldie bounces one almost to the same spot. Tougher play for Wong, but he makes it two down. Wong showing the kind of range at second base that we see from Nick Ahmed at shortstop for the Diamondbacks. Twice now ranging way up the middle of the field, throwing across his body to get the out. Well, once again for Carlos Martinez, who is rolling along here, having retired seven straight. He's got two outs on three pitches to open up an inning. And here's David Peralta, who struck out looking his first time. Yeah, if you're a pitching coach, that last delivery right there to David Peralta will drive you absolutely crazy. What two, two quick outs on three pitches. David Peralta is almost forced to take until he gets a strike just to avoid that quick inning. And Martinez missed the strike zone badly with the first delivery. That one's in there. It's one and one. Far from a finished product at age 23. Two and one. Mentioned Martinez, a winner his last time out against the Mets. He lost his two starts previous to that, beaten at Pittsburgh and here at Bush Stadium by the Tigers. Three one to Peralta. Belted into the shift. And that's the third out. Carlos Martinez, a nine pitch fourth. He's retired eight straight. He leads it one nothing. Soon, Saturday, June 6th, the Diamondbacks and the Mets, a 7 10 start at Chase Field. First 20,000 fans get this Tony LaRusa bobblehead, courtesy of Chevrolet. You can get your tickets right now online at dbacks.com. So you've got the jeans and the red D back shirt on there with Black Lab, part of his R Foundation, all the great work he does. And there he is, the longtime Cardinal skipper here with GM Dave Stewart. And manager Chip Hale as Chase Anderson will face Matt Adams to open up the bottom of the fourth. Adams, Peralta, Molina, four, five, and six. 
And Adams, an RBI ground out his first time up, and the shift is on once again for the Diamondbacks. And he bunts away from the shift. Chase can't chase it down, and there's no play for Ahmed. Well, we saw Chase Anderson at Miami last week make a couple of brilliant defensive plays right about that same spot, pouncing off the mound and trying to feel his position, but there was little he could do with that one. Andy Green and uh, Skipper Chip Hale talking over whether to alter that shift, I'm sure, next time that Matt Adams comes up with nobody on base. Adams has faced nothing but defensive overshifts all season long, and he has been willing to be one of those guys to go the other way and hit away from the shift. In this case, he bunts for a base hit. Yeah, that's do or die for Chase Anderson. He's the only guy that can make the play right there because of that shift. So Adams aboard. Here's Johnny Peralta. Rounded out his first time into a fielder's choice. And it's an all one count. Peralta now at 297 on the year. He's hit safely in 18 of his last 20 games. Chase has been working very well lately with that much improved sinking two seam fastball. Trying to get a ground ball here. And he's ahead of Peralta 0 and 2. That's been a big pitch for him. One he didn't really have last year, but he worked on it throughout spring training. And he says he feels like it's coming along pretty well. 13 ground ball outs in that win over the Marlins last week. This is away there, a ball in two strikes. And that's really helped Chase with one of his big keys here during this brilliant run this month he's had. Efficiency. He's not striking guys out. He's only got seven strikeouts in his last three starts. But the two-seamer is helping him get quick outs and pitching deeper into ballgames. Misses away, and it's two and two. And avoid that TMP, which was a problem for Chase all season last year. Too many pitches. He was very effective. He was getting out, putting zeros on the board, but it was taking him 20, 25, 30 pitches to get through an inning. Get that two seamer where you like it, where it's really got some sink on it, down and into the right hand hitter, get some ground ball outs, and avoid that TMP, which uh, so many times has been one of your keys to the game. Yeah. Haven't had to bring that up a whole lot lately. It's been nice. That's a good thing. Yeah. There goes Big City. Oh, Peralta man. reaches down. He got a great jump that time, Bob. You're right. Thank goodness. Yeah, he pulled a goldie right there. He just took off at first base. I could hear somebody yelling step off, but it was too late. Chase was already beginning his delivery to home plate. Big City got a big jump. Yeah, look at him. He's just walking off, walking off. And fortunately, Johnny Peralta swung at a pitch that was probably out of the strike zone right there, fouled it off. Adams holds this time and Peralta bangs a base hit into left. A pair of singles open up the Cardinal fourth. Well, we have a moment here. Let's take a look at our Valley Honda keys to the game here on Memorial Day in St. Louis. Let's keep it memorable. What a ball game today. Everybody will remember Memorial Day 2015 and avoid the red tide. We talked about the Cardinals and their fans. Cardinal Nation wearing red everywhere you go in the city. They come to the ballpark. They wear their red. The seats are red. Everything's red. So what you're saying is it's red. It's red. That's one of your great points about this ballpark. You, know, you can never tell how many people are here. <laughs> the shirts are red and the seats are yeah. red. I mean, there, there's some scattered empty seats here today. Not a lot of them, but you'd never know it. It's like a full house. <laughs> Two on, nobody out for Yadier Molina, who popped up his first time. 293 on the year. Still does not have a home run this season. And Molina got off to a very slow start offensively this year, but he's picked it up lately big time. In his last 19 games, he's hit nearly 360. Numbers this year with runners in scoring position. He's got Adams at second and Peralta at first.
Chase did a good job in the first inning, limiting the damage after Wong and Carpenter had base hits to lead off the ball game for the Cardinals. Gave up just the one run. And he's got some work to do here in the fourth with two on and no outs. Alina way out in front that time, and it's one and two. That was a really good straight changeup, up a little bit in the zone. Alina saw a fastball in his mind, swung at a fastball, it just never got there. Now this is talking about pitch efficiency. You're ahead of the count here, one and two. You don't want another four or five pitches to put them away. You want to try and get them here in the next one or two. Preferably with a ground ball. And this is where that two seamer comes in handy. I mean, he could throw a change up, possibly, maybe a curveball, get a swing and a miss. But you throw that two seamer up there low in the strike zone with a little bit of movement. You hope to get that ground ball, maybe get two for one here. Away and it's even two balls and two strikes. Chase's only loss of the season, April 27th, against the Rockies at Chase Field. Since then, he has been sensational. His ERA over his last four starts has been 1.03. He's given up just three runs over his last 26 innings coming into today. 2 2 pitch. Double play ball here. Goldie, Ahmed, Anderson covers and they turn two. Nicely done by the Diamondback infield right there. And Adams is in at third with two outs. That's not an easy double play to turn. Number one, you got Goldie, a right handed thrower, moving towards second base, but he gets the ball to Nick Ahmed in good shape. And that's the real key for the play. Chase Anderson getting over there quickly enough that he can play that ball just like a first baseman. Get your foot on the bag, stretch out for the throw, and complete the double play. Well, we were just talking a moment ago about how nice it would be to get a ground ball in that situation, and what a difference it makes. Adams at third, two down now for Jason Hayward, who grounded out his first time. No shift this time for the Diamondbacks with Adams the runner at third base and that's in there for strike one. <laughs> Off the glove of Ahmed it drops into left Adams scores and Hayward has an RBI it's two nothing Cardinals. Just a little too tall for naked shortstop. Right, it looked like Chase is going to be able to escape damage. That's a good pitch at the knees on the outside corner. Hayward goes the opposite way and just off the webbing of Nick's glove and on into left field for an RBI base hit. So it's two zip now. Here's Peter Borges who fly down. Maybe with that RBI, Hayward will get every, everybody to cool their jets here a little bit about the Shelby Miller deal. I mean, the Cardinals were in a tough spot. They had their proven top power hitting outfield prospect, Oscar, Tav Oscar Tavares, last fall. Just in that tragic car accident killed in the Dominican Republic along with his girlfriend. They needed a right fielder and they here in St. Louis John Moselak the GM and Mike Matheny. Here's Oscars number 18. Very close with Carlos Martinez the pitcher and Martinez changed his number to honor the memory of his late friend. Here he is but they had to find a right fielder. They lost four straight league championship series. They couldn't afford they thought to lose a bat and they thought they'd go get Jason Hayward. And there's still time for that to work out. It's just uh, not worked out very well so far. It was a real gamble by the Cardinals giving up a young pitcher that they control for a while, a guy they developed. 
for a potential impact bat, but someone who has not been consistent and can leave town after this year. Keeping a close eye on Hayward over there. One and to Borges. This trade. I mean, Cardinal fans, I mean, it, it's all over the papers here. They talk about it all the time. There's so much focus, emphasis in this city about this baseball team, especially in the media. And the discussion, BB, about this deal, it, it seems, has just been nonstop ever since spring training. That's really taken on a life of its own. It's, uh, it's a topic of a conversation on almost a daily basis, especially on those days after Shelby Miller starts and uh, puts up stellar numbers once again for the Atlanta Braves. And Hayward, five seasons in Atlanta, hit 262 while he was there, averaged 17 homers, 58 RBIs a year, and was a two time Gold Glove winner in the outfield. 2 0 pitch. And of course, there was no way of knowing that Adam Wainwright was going to go down and uh, miss the entire season. Uh, obviously, if you knew that, uh, that's probably not a deal you would have made. Pursued other avenues to plug that spot out in right field rather than give up one of your best young pitchers. Well, it was reported here in St. Louis that the guy the Braves first tried to get was Carlos Martinez. That's the guy they were targeting in Atlanta. And they settled using little finger quotes for Shelby Miller. Two and one. Hayward holds it first. That one's fouled back, and it's two balls and two strikes. I remember when Tony La Russa was still managing the Cardinals, and I had gone uh, down to Florida to watch uh, some, my son playing some games in the Florida State League, and one of them happened to be against the Cardinals affiliate down there, and Shelby Miller was a starting pitcher that day. And when we came back and played the Cardinals the next time, I mentioned to Tony, I had a chance to see that kid Shelby Miller pitch, and Tony said, boy, we like him a lot. He's going to be special. Well, he has been this yeah. year. It's not for the Cardinals. <laughs> it's a problem. 20th pitch of this inning coming up for Chase Anderson trying to get that final out. After Hayward's two out RBI single. There goes Hayward from first and Borges strikes out. That's the first strikeout this afternoon for Chase Anderson, but the Cardinals add a run and through four, they lead it 2 nothing. is brought to you in part by your Valley Honda dealers, where you'll get more standard features for less money. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Mix One, great taste, no face, available at local retailers.
Memorial Day in St. Louis. Glad you're with us here on Fox Sports Arizona. Steve Rathian, Bob Brentley, and Todd Walsh here at Bush Stadium. Where the Diamondbacks trail the Cardinals 2-0 and are trying to get something going offensively against hard-throwing right-hander Carlos Martinez, who has retired eight straight. As Yasmani Tomas leads off the fifth. Tomas Owings goes to wish 5-6-7. Yasmani singled his first time up today. And he's now got a nine-game hitting streak. And Tomas telling Jack McGruder at FoxSportsArizona.com that uh, he's enjoying himself right now. And why not? Little tapper, slow roller. Tomas on the run, and he beats it out. A base hit. A swing and bunt by Yasmani Tomas, and it's another multi-hit game. He's two for two. That was going to be a tough play for anybody, even if Martinez, the pitcher, comes up with the ball. He's going to have to stop his momentum, wheel around, and throw to first. Tough play for Carpenter. No play that time for Peralta. It's short. Infield single for Yasmani Tomas. Good start here. Well, Tomas led off the second with a base hit to center, but Chris Owens came up and hit into a 4 6 3. So let's see if CO can avoid that here. He's 0 for 1. Goes bunt, pulls back, and looks at ball one. Infield single for Tomas right there. Before that, the last eight batters for the D-backs have hit seven ground ball outs, which tells you Martinez keeping that ball down around the knees with that little bit of movement. That two-seam sinking fastball is such a tough pitch against this guy because he throws it as hard as he throws his four seamer. Most guys don't do that. The two seam, now what, you know, two, three, four miles an hour slower. Mm -hmm. But his is a hard two seamer. Down and in on the right hand hitters. It's like that kind of ate him up and it's one and two. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code DBACKS50. PapaJohns.com. 1-1 one, one count on CO. Trying to snap that 0 for 19 right here. Ball and two strikes. This season averaging almost 17 pitches per inning, which is the fifth highest in the National League, but through four innings today, averaging just uh, about 11 and a half pitches per inning. Some of that due to the Diamondbacks uh, having a few hitters in this lineup that don't like to see a lot of pitches in and bat. And this is the poster boy for that, Chris Owings. Belts that one off the glove of Peralta at short and into center. Tomas will stop at second. So there's a base hit for CO. First two have reached in the Diamondback fifth. We talked about Colton Wong's range at second base. Johnny Peralta does not have the same kind of range at shortstop for the Cardinals. Playing a little bit shallow, anticipating a possible double play and two or three steps and a dive can't get to the spot. Well, the Diamondbacks have had a lot of luck lately with the bottom portion of their batting order, and it's up to the seven and eight guys right here. Tuffy goes to which grounded out his first time. Two on, nobody out. Strike one. Good month for Tuffy offensively. He hit under a buck 80 in April, but he's up over 290 here in May. He's down 0 and 2. Well, that's that's improvement right there. Plus the on base percentage from this month to April is up more than 100 points. One thing you have to keep in mind with Tuffy, this is a guy that has never been a starting catcher anywhere. He's always either shared catching time or been part of a platoon or been a backup. This is the first time in his life he's ever had this kind of steady at bats. How big a difference does that make? 
Well, I mean, I think it makes all the difference in the world. I, I was uh, in the same boat, uh, sharing a platoon with Milt May with the San Francisco Giants for a few years before I had an opportunity to play every day, and it just was like night and day. You came to the ballpark knowing you were going to be in the lineup. You knew who was starting for the other team. You knew what he was going to try to do to you, and your rhythm, your timing, your, your vision at the plate, everything was much, much sharper when you're in there on a daily basis. I imagine there's more homework involved as well if you're the catcher, right? Yeah, but it's that becomes second nature as a catcher. You're used to studying advanced reports uh, to, to get your own pitcher prepared for a ball game. So uh, yeah, it's just it's just the natural progression. Now you're studying opposing pitchers to help yourself. Two two pitch. Trying to come hard inside to get that ground ball, but he's worked it full three and two. This is where some of the inefficiency that you just mentioned a moment ago comes into play for Martinez. Back way tomorrow, we hope. Weather forecast for tomorrow, not great, frankly. I'm the back live pregame show comes your way at 430. Three balls, two strikes. Here it is. Got him. Four strikeout for Martinez. That's the first out in the fifth. Boy, and that's one to file away if you're Tuffy Goswish. Every pitch this at bat was inside. Look at the location. None of them really, other than the first one, in the strike zone. Everything off the plate inside. Came in and tied him up. Nick Ahmed now grounded out his first time. Trying to keep that nine game hitting streak going. He's got Tomas at second and Owings at first. Adjustment period with Nick on his mechanics. We heard Chip Hale talk about it earlier. That shorter swing, getting that front foot down, keeping his head still, which was a problem for him. And Nick has said all these mechanical adjustments, which has led to that great May after the tough April, have centered around trying to free himself up so he's seeing the ball better. Keeping that head still, and as a result, he's not chasing as many pitches. As he was before, and he says he's now ready to attack pitches in the strike zone. It also appears he doesn't have quite as many moving parts now as we've seen in the past. You may remember last year, Nick had his hands way down by his belt and just kind of left him there, fired his swing from there. Early this season, he started low and then raised up with his hands. Now he's got him up in a little more of a hitting position and doesn't have quite as much movement as he's waiting on that pitch to get into the hitting zone. Well, Chip Hale Bob made a great point about that. He said, when you're long limbed baseball is tough chip said it's a game built for short limbs you have to hit and be short to the ball and nick is a lanky guy up there at 62 190 yeah, that's a that's a very good point i think that's why michael jordan struggled so badly when he tried to make the transition to baseball boy martinez blows him away five strikeouts Slider up high right in the middle of the plate. Well, we'll see if Chase can knock one through the infield here with two outs. Mentioned it earlier, Martinez has a tendency to get a little ahead of himself. Struck out the number seven and eight hitter in the lineup with a couple guys on base. Missed badly with that first delivery to Chase Anderson, so showing a little bit more maturity than we're used to seeing. He stepped off the back of the mound, caught his breath, wiped his brow, and now goes back to work. It, it seems like Bob Yadier Molina back there is kind of leading him through that because Yadier will just stand up there until he thinks Martinez has settled down and then he'll get back down in that crouch. Yeah, and there are times he'll get into his crouch and not even look at the mound. He'll look over in that first base dugout and just make Martinez stand on the mound and wait. I'll tell you when you're ready. That's right. <laughs> you catchers. Doing one. 
you ever a guy like that that just started working really fast all the time out there? Uh, there are a few guys I caught over the course of my career, especially when they were going good. And when they're going good, you want to get the ball back to them quickly. Yeah, climb up there. Let's go. Chase Anderson knocks it down the right field line and just misses. That would have been nice. Yeah, that would have easily scored two with two outs in the inning. CO was really motoring from first base. Just a little bit too much slice at the very end. Hops up into the stands. Two and two now. One big problem for Chase Anderson this year has been run support only eight total runs while he's been in the game in his eight starts this season. He could drive in a couple right here and help himself. And he chases that one in the dirt and strikes out. So Martinez gives up the two singles and then gets three straight strikeouts. He leads it to nothing. Down to his alma mater, the University of Arizona, actually in the office of the athletic director, Greg Byrne, where he had a chance to speak to Andy Lopez, the longtime head coach for uh, Arizona Wildcat baseball, who retired today after 33 years in college baseball. The last 14 in Tucson, of course, they won the national championship in 2012. He's had a bit of a health scare over the last little bit. The program struggled mightily over the last year and a half or so. And I, I asked Chip, what was that phone call like? And he said, you know, and he just sounded relieved, said it was time, and he's left the program in a great place. But Chip Hill making sure that he touched base with him before he went into the dugout here in St. Louis today. Thank you, Todd. Oscar Tavares leads it off for Carlos Martinez wearing Oscar Tavares's number 18. In the bottom of the fifth inning, his close friend who was killed in the offseason in that automobile accident in the Dominican Republic. Which just was a shock for everybody in baseball when that news was announced during the postseason last year. That chip, of course, on that Arizona team in '86 hit 345, won the College World Series. I was talking to Joe Madden, Bob, over the weekend. And he said when he was a scout mid 80s he lived in Mesa Arizona was his territory he scouted Chip Hale at U of A. That? And I said what do the scouting reports say and Joe just said overachiever <laughs> you know one of those guys one of those grinders just got every every thing he could out of the ability he had 17th round draft pick out of U of A.
Ace Anderson hits his second strikeout to open up the fifth. Colton Wong will step up now. He went off the ball game for the Cardinals with a double and a score to run. Popped up his last time. He's one for two. And Wong has turned into something of a power bat for St. Louis, his second full big league season. 12 homers last year. He's already got five this season. And the slugging percentage is up about 100 points from a year ago. And they've got a nice one two combo going here at the top with Wong batting leadoff and Carpenter in the two hole. It's been that way basically here for the last month or so. Off the fist. And he drops it into left field. Wong a hold with a long one out single. Big turn thought about second base right there. You get rewarded when you keep your bat in the strike zone for a long time. Occasionally you'll get a jam shot that floats over the infield in front of the outfield. That's what happened to Wong right there. And now here's Carpenter who singled his first time up. He's one for two. Again, Chase Anderson traffic around him on the bases. The one-out base runner for Carpenter is at 325. And Carpenter last three seasons over 300 starts, batting leadoff for Mike Matheny. But to very early this month, Matheny sort of went up to him and said, "You know, I think you might fit pretty well in the two-hole." And he's so I'm not going to do it, but I was just thinking about it. And the next day he showed up, and sure enough, he was hitting second. He said, well, I, th I thought we agreed that we weren't going to do this, but uh, it's really worked out well, and Carpenter says he's just decided to go with it. Jason Hayward had been in a two-hole for St. Louis. He was dropped down, and he's now a number seven hitter. Another reason this seems to be a good fit for Matt Carpenter, that two hole, he's a real good hitter with two strikes, nearly 290 this season when he has two strikes on him as a hitter. With Wong and Carpenter at the top, they've gotten 49 RBI from the one and two spot in the lineup, most in the National League. This was Carpenter, a home run. Yesterday in Kansas City, five homers in his last 16 games. And Matheny, as I said, initially told him, look, we don't want to move you out of the leadoff spot. But uh, one reason it's worked so well is because Colton Wong has really had a breakthrough offensive year at the top of the order. They haven't missed Carpenter batting leadoff and has become more of a run producer type here in this spot. There goes Wong. Pitches outside. Throw from Gozowish is in time and they got him. Tuffy Gozowish throws out Colton Wong. Two down in the fifth. All right, Tuffy had a nice pitch to handle that time with a left handed hitter. The pitch was way away from Matt Carpenter. He was able to kind of walk into that pitch from Chase Anderson. Got a lot on that throw to second base and once again a nice quick tag by Nick Ahmed to get the out out there at second base. Boom. Three and one now on Carpenter. Base is empty two outs. And that's in there. It's full three and two. Boy, and the Diamondbacks continue to do the little things well. We've talked about this seven game stretch when they're six and one. Nobody's been able to run on them. They've given up three stolen bases, but they've caught five guys trying to steal. They've induced the double plays eight times. Guys have grounded into double plays. They've only given up one unearned run in their last seven ball games. Reaches down and lines it over the glove of Owings at second base and into right. Carpenter two for three. Wait, how many times today, BB, have the Cardinals lined one? 
just over the head of a Diamondback infielder. I think that's the third time today. So they have a two out base runner for Matt Holliday, who's over two. Well, let's be honest. It's a little easier to line it over CO's head. <laughs> that's true. He's vertically challenged compared to the rest of the infielders. <laughs> Say to fat guys, right? Am I overweight? No, you just need some height. You're just not tall enough. Yeah. I mean, that is really, really short. <laughs> it's all about perspective. Be careful with the holiday here. One and one. Nine straight seasons with at least 20 home runs. An all star six times. On the back live post game show follows our ball game here this afternoon. Reaction from the clubhouse. Backs have won six of their last seven, trying to keep that going, but they trail two nothing here in the fifth. A little flare into right. It's in front of Trumbo. Back to back two out singles by the Cardinals, and here comes Big City. Cardinals first run an RBI fielder's choice he singled and scored his last time up. Carpenter is at second holiday at first two outs. That's a good pitch to start the sequence. You get these guys in the middle of the lineup, run producing hitters with runners in scoring position. They're going to be very aggressive. They're going to swing at the first thing they see close to the strike zone. So Chase throws a breaking ball that starts about mid thigh and ends up in the dirt. It in the air along the left field line. Tomas gives it a look. It's in the second row. Cardinals have been closely watching Matt Holiday here over the early portions of this season. There it is. He's reached base safely now in 41 straight games to start the year. Only one off the franchise record. Two times that 41 game streak was extended by a hit by pitch, including a couple days ago when we mentioned he got drilled in the forearm. 0 oh and 2. Diamondbacks have been out hit so far 9 to 4. They trail it 2 nothing. That one it gets behind Gozovich. Well, tough to get over there far enough that time. Tuffy would have had to be behind Matt Adams to block that pitch. Her ball he just hung on to a little bit too long. When you're behind Matt Adams, he's like the human eclipse. 6'3, 260. Uh. 
Called strike three. He rings him up. And Big City has a word with Lance Barksdale. Third strikeout for Chase Anderson. Diamondbacks might have got a break there. And Anderson strands two. He keeps it a two nothing ball game. Arizona is brought to you in part by Tire Pros. For the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit one of the 22 locally owned Arizona Tire Pros locations. By Law Tigers, Arizona's motorcycle lawyers. And by Chaz Roberts, air conditioning and plumbing. Choose Chaz. St. Louis on this Memorial Day Monday, Diamondbacks and Cardinals, sixth inning underway, and Duran Ciarte swings at the first pitch from Carlos Martinez. Chase Anderson wiggled off the hook there. Might have got a break from plate umpire Lance Barksdale on that pitch to Matt Adams. And a little equipment violation following that strikeout. Rolled in front of Dave McKay at first. Here's that strike three pitch to Matt Adams. Uh, Might have been down a little bit. Tuffy does a nice job the way he receives this pitch. Holds it right there and does get the call from Lance Barksdale. And uh, ultimately, Matt Adams let that helmet fly and uh, will draw an equipment fine. Ender drops it in front of Borges in center field. The leadoff single gets start here for the Diamondbacks to open up the sixth. I'm glad they didn't have that equipment fine when I was playing. You'd still be paying. Oh man. Installments. Be like, be like uh, student loans. I'd be paying it off forever. <laughs> Did you have a trademark move where you were a water cooler guy, a, a smash the bat guy? What was? Oh, whatever struck my fancy. But I was really good. My specialty was the saloon door at Candlestick Park. You know, our dugout was on the first base side, and on one end was the tunnel that went back to the clubhouses, and at the other end. Well, it was a small bathroom for guys to use during the game so you didn't have to walk all the way back to the clubhouse. Seems like he broke his bat. Carpenter has no play on Enciarte and he throws out Trumbo at first. And just to finish that up quickly, there was a swinging door on this bathroom uh, right behind the bat rack, and I always kept my catcher's gear right down at that end of the bench. And if I made a bat out, I'd come back and take it out on that swinging door. And eventually, one day, the hinges gave out and the door fell off. and. Uh, Needless to say, we couldn't use the restroom for a couple of days until the grounds crew was able to fix the door. Compliments of uh, my paycheck. <laughs> well, a tough matchup here with Enciarte in scoring position at second base in one out. Goldschmidt and Martinez. Goldie this year with runners in scoring position, hitting 463. Martinez pitching with runners in scoring position. Opponents against him hitting under 190. So Bob, something's got to give. He's got to give. 
I was going to say they had a saloon at Candlestick Park. Uh, they probably should have the way we played uh, some of the years <laughs> I was there. I need a drink. <laughs> well, now if you go, uh, of course, they have the bathrooms and the cages and everything in the clubhouse mm. areas are sort of near the dugout when you go underneath there. And now they'll put the big truck tires down there. Heavy bags. Yeah, all kinds of stuff to take out your frustrations. The stuff guys can just bang on for a minute or two. I'd like to think you inspired that. Check swing foul and it's 0 and 2. Well, two strikes doesn't seem to make much difference to Diamondbacks hitters today. They've got five hits in the game and four of those have come in two strike counts. Two on 0 2 and two on 1 2. So we've got him right where we want him. They're looking for that big one though. All five hit singles for the D back so far. All strike three. Seven strikeouts for Carlos Martinez. And that's the second out in the sixth. Well, if you're going to take it against Matt Adams, uh, you're going to have to take it against your hitters as well. Borderline down right there. Lance Barksdale consistently calling that low pitch. Martinez now with seven strikeouts. Four of his last five outs are strikeouts, and here's David Peralta for two. David, if you go back about two weeks ago, was hitting 290 for the year, but he still had some big hits lately, certainly, but has not been quite as effective at the plate lately. Last 14 games, he's hit about 180, and the batting average has dipped more than 40 points. Mitchell Martinez uh, giving up only a 189 batting average with runners in scoring position with runners in scoring position and two outs it drops down to 063. Well, those, those are the key numbers too. What does a pitcher do when he's in trouble and if you can make your best pitches when you've got traffic on the bases in scoring position. They usually you're going to be all right by the end of the season. You look at a lot of the good pitchers in the game. They give up their share of base hits, but with runners on base, that's when they're at their best. Getting a little erratic here. It's three and one. So the more trouble he gets in, the lower the opponent's batting average. In this situation right here, he's the fifth best pitcher in baseball. And Ciarte in second. Two outs, three and one on David Peralta. Ball four. First walk issued by Martinez, and that'll bring up Yasmani Tomas with two on and two out. Tomas so far, two for two, another multi hit game. Last time he got aboard with kind of a swing and bunt, but you'll take it. He's got a nine game hitting streak. Walk for Martinez. First walk by either pitcher in the ball game so far. Talked about it at the top of the show, Bob. It's been a season worth of two out hits. Need one right here. Mm -hmm. Strike one. So Tomas, as he steps in now, 17 hits in his last 38 at bats. Lines it to Borges in center. And that's the inning. Diamondbacks get a leadoff single. They cannot get a run across. And as we head to the bottom of the sixth, they trail it 2-0 in St. Louis.
gave everything in their service to our country. Our very best wishes to all Diamondback fans everywhere on this Memorial Day. Steve Berthew, Bob Renly, and Todd Walsh with you from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri. Chase Anderson out there to start the bottom of the sixth inning. Diamondbacks trail it 2 nothing. Johnny Peralta, the shortstop, leads it off. Peralta singled his last time up. He's one for two. And Chase Anderson has done a very good job of limiting the damage so far. He's given up nine hits through five innings, but uh, just two runs. He has not walked a batter. He's got three strikeouts. Chase took a while to even get a starting spot in this D-backs rotation this spring, despite the fact that he was perhaps their most consistent starting pitcher for most of last summer. He didn't get an official nod until late in spring training. This is there in his three and one. And so he said this year he kind of came in with a chip on his shoulder, wanted to prove people wrong after some doubts were raised the way he finished last year. Just two wins in his last seven starts. And he walks Peralta to lead off the six. You mentioned he's given up nine base hits through five innings in this game, but only the two runs. And you ask, well, how do you do that? Well, you don't walk guys. You don't put traffic on base that shouldn't be out there. And of course, he walks the leadoff man here in the sixth. For Yadier Molina. He grounded into a double play his last time up. He's 0 for 2. As a general rule, Yadier Molina will now try to shoot that hole on the right side of the infield. They're getting back to what Tuffy was talking about facing this Cardinals offense. They're good fundamental hitters. They hit to the situation, and Yadier Molina throughout his career has always tried to hit where there was a weakness in the defense, and right now that's on the right side. Well, one of the weaknesses today for Chase has been allowing that leadoff man in the inning to reach base safely. The walk to Peralta. The fourth time in six innings the Cardinals have had the leadoff man aboard and twice that leadoff man has scored. And it's a two nothing ball game. The 1 0 to Molina. Sprays him around pretty good. Tough to defend a guy like Yadier Molina who hit it from foul line to foul line. Peralta off of the pitch and Molina lines it into the right field seats. The Cardinals do not run a lot. There was a time that that would be a shocking state back in the days of Whitey Herzog and the track teams they used to have on that AstroTurf at Old Bush Stadium. But Mike Matheny a little more judicious picks his spots to play hit and run. He's got a couple guys who have base stealing speed on this Cardinals team. but. They don't run nearly as much as the Cardinals of old. Reaches down and lifts it out to center field. Ender and Ciarte is there. And that's the first out in the sixth. Yeah, those teams, Willie McGee and Vince Coleman, mid-80s Cardinals, where they had those blue uniforms on the road, tops and bottoms. Ozzy Smith and Monty Smith. Skates, they used to call last yeah. Great history here. 2011, 2006, 82, 67, 64, World Series champs. Whitey Herzog, they lovingly called him the White Rat. Here's Hayward, who had an RBI single with two outs his last time up. Shoots this one the other way toward the left field corner, but it's drifting into the seats. You know, I think part of the reason for the high expectations on Jason Hayward were the way his big league career got started. I happened to be at, uh, at Atlanta that day against Carlos Zambrano. Everybody was looking forward to this young man. Came with so much ballyhoo, and he did not disappoint. His first at bat in the big leagues, he hit it into the back of the Braves bullpen out there in right field. Game's easy. Looked easy. <laughs> 
Yeah, from McDonough, Georgia, first round pick by his hometown Braves in 07, the 14th overall selection. And that year, 2010, he was a 20 year old rookie, hit 277, had 18 homers. And everybody said, well, this guy's the next Hank Aaron. And that's one of the big issues, I think, with Jason Hayward. What is Jason Hayward? Because he started out as a power hitter when he was young. And then lately he's become more of a top of the order, two hole type guy, an on base percentage guy, a walks guy, a very good defender in the outfield. He's won two gold gloves out there. But, you know, as he heads into free agency, I'm not sure people really know what Jason Hayward is. So if you go out and decide, oh, let's get this guy. And keep in mind, he's only 25. He'll turn 26 in August. And he'll hit the open market this winter. If I want to sign Jason Hayward, I'm a GM. I'm not sure what I'm getting. And how much it's worth is the more important question. It's number 90 from Chase Anderson on the way. Broken bat, chance to turn two here. Goldie, Ahmed, Anderson covers again, but the throw gets away and Hayward's aboard. They turn that double play once earlier on the Molina grounder in the fourth, and they can't quite get to there. Now Jason Hayward runs considerably better than Yadier Molina. Goldie once again to his backhand side, gets it to Nick in good shape. Chase was over there, but Jason Hayward just too quick. Fielder's choice for Hayward as they erase Peralta at second base. So now at 90 pitches for Anderson through five and two third. Hayward at first, two down for Peter Borges. Borges is 0 for 2, struck out his last time up. Randall Delgado now throwing in the Diamondback bullpen. Now pitcher spot due up fourth for the Diamondbacks in the top half of the seventh inning. So Chase Anderson ought to go ahead and empty the tank right here. Hayward will run on you. He's four for four in stolen base attempts this year. And now would be the time to give it a shot if you're Mike Matheny. Even if Hayward would happen to get thrown out at second base, you'd have your number eight hitter and a great speed guy and Peter Borg just leading off ahead of the pitcher. Cardinals again without their center fielder John Jay after wrist surgery. So Borges and Randall Gritchick have seen a lot of time in center for St. Louis. 101. Speaking of Gritchick, he's on deck and would hit for Martinez should we get down to that nine spot. He's a former first round pick by the Angels and they're excited about him here this year. It's hard for me to believe. I mean, I've watched Peter Borges since he was in uh, middle school. And, uh, he's <laughs> one of the fastest, best defending center fielders I've ever seen. But people around the Cardinals will tell you that Gritchick is right there, if not a little bit better. And he's got tremendous power in that bat, Randall Gritchick. The question is, is, is he going to be consistent enough to become an everyday guy? The talent is certainly there. There's no doubt about that. Gritchick just 23 years old. First round pick by the Angels in 09. Got him in the David Freeze deal. Two and one to Borges. Hayward bluffs at first and Borges lines it off the glove of Tomas at third. Ahmed recovers. But you're never going to get the speedy Peter Borges on that one. And the Cardinals will have two on with two outs, and Gritchick will go back in the dugout. And Martinez will take the at bat. And off the glove of Tomas at third. Fortunately, right to Nick Ahmed at shortstop. And as you said, Peter Borges motoring down that first baseline. No chance to get it. And Martinez, who's only thrown 82 pitches through six innings. Will hit with two on and two out. And he'll 
go down there and have a quick conversation with Jose Akendo. This seems like an odd turn of events here. I'm not quite sure why Grichik was called back in favor of Martinez with two outs in the inning. Normally you'd want a hitter up there in this situation to try to drive that runner home from second base. First thought was they're going to try to pull a double steal, and if they're successful, then Grichik will hit for Martinez. Then Martinez is only giving up five hits, all singles. He's got seven strikeouts. He's behind 0 and 2, but uh, yeah, this is a chance to tack on some runs here for Mike Matheny, but he wants Martinez out there. Well, Chase, if he gets out of this, I think we can say he's done a terrific job this year limiting the damage. The key is to do it one more time. Cardinals with 10 hits. He's walked only one. And he's been in trouble, it seems, almost every inning. But it's still just a 2 0 ball game. Martinez. Creeps his way down there to chase that one. Tough he throws him out. And Chase Anderson has his fourth strikeout. He strands two and he keeps it a two-nothing game as we head to the seventh. Chase Anderson six innings of work two runs on 10 hits pitched out of trouble time and time again throughout the ball game but the, the pitching story today Bob no doubt it's been Carlos Martinez yeah really and you documented very early on that two seam sinker that he's using a lot more often this year has gotten him a lot of easy ground ball outs in this game struck out the side after giving up back to back base hits in the fifth Got that strikeout pitch working whether it's the flat slider or that heavy sinker. And an interesting call there by Mike Matheny with the two on and two out and what is still a two nothing game a chance to maybe tack on some runs with the pitcher spot up there. He recalled Randall Grichik and sent Carlos Martinez up there to strike out presumably so he could keep pitching in the ball game and we'll see how that works out as Chris Owings leads off the seventh. And keep in mind also Martinez is a converted reliever. 57 appearances last year, 50 in relief. He only made seven starts last season. And so he's not a guy that has gone deep into ball games. He's gone seven innings only once in his career. That was uh, last month. And he's out there to start the seventh inning right here. One and two to CO, who singled his last time up.
Chris able to check there and it's full three and two. There is action in the Cardinal bullpen a right hander and a left hander are thrown down here. He strikes out Owens eight strikeouts for Martinez one down. Hey fans MLB.tv premium the number one live streaming sports service is celebrating 13 years and you can watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. You'll get real time highlights live look ins a pitch tracking widget and a whole lot more blackout rules do apply. So check MLB.tv for details. Here's Tuffy goes Bullpen is busy. Anus the righty Seacrest. The lefty. Tuffy struck out his last time up. He's 0 for 2. The most pitches Carlos Martinez has ever thrown in a game. 103. That was earlier this month at Detroit. He went five innings. And a lot better here today. Now home plate completely in the shadows of the roof of the stadium here right now while Martinez stands in bright sunlight and bright sunlight behind him. He went full on Owings three and two. He's behind three one on Tuffy Gozovich. A 315 local start here in downtown St. Louis. So we're right in that funny shadow territory. That's in there. And he's gone full on toughy. I'm not sure if it's by design or just uh, the release point of Martinez. A lot of pitches inside to righties today. A lot of pitches inside off the plate. Sure has worked. He's given up just five hits, all singles. He's walked one. He's got eight strikeouts. And he's got another 3 2 pitch on the way to Gozovich. Missed inside. Came inside again there, and that's his second walk. Before Nick Ahmed takes us at bat, let's take a look at this day in Major League Baseball history brought to you by Geico back in 2007. Mark Reynolds, who's in that first base dugout today, batting cleanup for the very first time, goes five for five in a 13 3 win over the Astros. Just a double shy of the cycle. Mark Reynolds done a nice job here in St. Louis. They've started developing a, essentially a first base platoon with Reynolds, the right hander, and Adams, the left hand hitter. Lance Barksdale out to break up the conversation now with Molina and Martinez as Dick Ahmed steps in. One out and Tuffy the runner at first. There's Big City. Pitcher spot is due up next for the Diamondbacks. Looks like uh, Aaron Hill is out there in the on deck circle. Nick trying to extend a nine game hit streak. Double play ball here. Peralta, Juan, and they can't turn it. Ahmed beats it out. Tough. He did a good job there coming in on Colton Wong at second base. So Aaron Hill with two outs and Ahmed at first. He'll hit for Chase Anderson. Struggle for the D backs today with runners on base, one for 11, while the Cardinals, on the other hand, five for 17 in a similar situation. Aaron Hill, three for seven as a pinch hitter this year. First pitch, grounded softly to third. Carpenter throws him out. And for the second time in his career, Carlos Martinez has gone seven innings. Cardinals have a 2 0 lead.
Log on to FoxSportsArizona.com slash Beat the Heat and enter the word salute for your chance to win a trip to San Diego for the July 4th weekend. Throughout the month of May, we'll provide a word of the day every game. Once you see it, go to FoxSportsArizona.com slash Beat the Heat and enter that word. The more times you enter, the better your chances to win. All the info you need is at FoxSportsArizona.com. The password is salute. salute. Remember on Hee Haw, they used to do that? Salute. Yeah. They'd say the name of some little town. And population 431. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Oliver Perez on for the bottom of the seventh inning. The struggling left-hander. The ERA now at 7-2-0. And he'll work to the top of the order. Colton Wong, Matt Carpenter, and Matt Holliday. You don't strike me as the hee-haw kind of a guy. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was on. I don't know what to tell you. There were, there were three channels, yeah, right, right, when I was yeah, a kid. Yeah. He got... 9,000 channels down. I was a kid. Well, what's on? Well, it's Hee Haw. It's Hee Haw. Junior Samples. Hey, Grandpa, what's for dinner? Yeah, I watched Hee Haw. I lived Hee Haw for crying out loud. I was going to say, because Shockton, <laughs> you got Minnie Pearl walking around with a price tag on her hat. Absolutely. Just in case you want to return it. Roy Rogers and Roy, Roy Rogers. No, uh, Roy Clark and Buck Owens. Yeah. Want to know? You know, when you're six years old, you'll watch anything. As we continue to lock down that under 25 demo with our 40 year old TV references. Long has doubled single. He scored a run two for three. Boy, all he could use a good outing today, even uh, trailing by two runs. Just to get his legs back underneath him out there on the mound, start throwing some quality strikes, and especially start doing better against the lefties. Off the fist, a little jam shot pop up, and an easy play for Trumbo out there. And Ciarte ranging way over there, just in case Mark couldn't see it in that sun. That's an alert play right there by Ender Enciarte. Mark is looking right up into that afternoon sun. He shielded his eyes immediately, and Ender came over from center on a dead sprint just in case Trumbo couldn't find that ball. That's a long run for him out there, too. One away for Carpenter, who's got two hits. Came into the ball game sixth in the National League. And if you're scoring at home, it should look a little something like that. Although... That's incorrect. He's actually got two singles. So don't start erasing just yet. We'll get that worked out. 0 and 1. I think Junior Samples is operating the truck down there. <laughs> that was wishful thinking, yeah. <laughs> It'd be nice if he was over 3, but he's a pretty good hitter. Shoots it out to the left center field gap. Peralta saw that drifting toward the gap and went back and then had to come in. And we've seen David take some unusual routes in the outfield, and that was one right there. Got on his horse, headed for that gap in left center, and had to slam on the brakes and actually come in a step or two to make the play. Anytime a batter hits the ball to the opposite field, it's going to have that kind of spin that causes it to knock down when it gets out there to the outfield. Two outs for Holiday, who singled his last time. He's one for three. Interesting to think now that Matt Holiday has been in St. Louis longer than when he was uh, with the Rockies. Had some big years, of course, with Colorado. Played five seasons there. LMVP runner-up in 2007. Got him to the World Series that year. But uh, this is his seventh season now in St. Louis. Yeah, the chances are this is the last time you'll see him today. We saw Randall Gritchick make it as far as the on-deck circle before being called back. But I would imagine he'll come in for defense should Holiday make an out here. He has never been a great defender, Matt Holiday. But a real good hitter. Funny, he signed that big contract with the Cardinals. Seven years, $120 million. It seemed like a 
whole truckload of money back then. It still is, but uh, seems slightly more reasonable now. But he's only got one more year to go on that big deal. He's been here that long. Off the mound. Or Ollie's foot. I think it hit his foot. And Holiday's aboard. Yep. Ryan DePanfalo will come out and have a look along with Chip Hale. Boy, you just heard a thud. On the instep of his right foot. Maybe. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I'm not sure if it hit him in the air or whether it hit the ground first. Goldie thought it hit his foot in the air and ricocheted high. Yeah, he's right. That, that that's still a live ball. That's why Goldie dives here trying to make the catch on the pop up. Just couldn't quite get there in time. If he is able to make that catch, that's an out. The ball never touched the ground. They put that right foot kind of behind him there, and it got him near the heel. And they give him a few warm up tosses here to make sure everything's okay. You want him to be able to stay in there because you've got the left hand hitting Matt Adams coming up. 90 miles an hour off the bat and off the foot of Oliver Perez. We had a similar thing happen when I was catching for the Giants and Mike Kruka was on the mound and uh, got hit with a line drive and they said you want to throw a couple of warm up pitches and Jose Akendo the third base coach for the Cardinals was the next scheduled hitter and Kruko got back up on the mound took a wind up and threw the ball halfway up the backstop and told the umpire I'm ready. And Akendo said doesn't he want to throw another one. Kruko <laughs> said no I'm fine get in there. How did he do. I don't even remember I was <laughs> laughing myself. <laughs> the shift is on. For Adams. That one's outside for a ball. Matt Adams singled and scored in the fourth. He's got an RBI ground out. He's one for three. Got Yasmani Tomas, the third baseman, where the second baseman would normally be. And Chris Owings out in shallow right. Goldie holding Holiday on the bag at first. Oh, he's throwing a few wild ones in that right hand batter's box. And he's behind 3 0. Johnny Peralta on deck. Looks like. Randall Delgado warming up again in the Diamondback bullpen. Yeah, a couple of righties on deck, Peralta and Molina, so I'm sure this will be all these uh, last batter one way or the other. He had thrown 10 pitches, seven strikes before getting hit. He's thrown three balls since, make it four. And a walk to Adams. So the Cardinals will have two on and two out for Peralta. And that's it for Oliver Perez. Here comes Chip Hale. Pitching change in St. Louis. Diamondbacks trail at 2 nothing. Back after this.
MLB on Fox Sports 1 continues. You can watch your Diamondbacks take on the Brewers at 1 Pacific time. Then at 4, it's Baseball Night in America on Fox. As the Dodgers square off against these Cardinals. Coverage starts at 1 o'clock. Your home for baseball every Saturday is Fox and Fox Sports 1. Randall Delgado comes on to face Johnny Peralta. Two on and two outs. Two nothing Diamondbacks trail it here in the seventh. He's got Matt Holliday, the runner at second, and Matt Adams at first. Peralta one for two. He has singled and walked. Drops that breaking ball in there for a strike. Going one. one. Numbers on Randall this year. A 4.05 ERA is 18th appearance. He did not go, says Chris Eagle. And it's a ball and a strike to Johnny Peralta. Flat slider across the bottom of the strike zone. Peralta looks like he held up. He's still a, as good a hitter as ever in his 13th year in the big leagues, Johnny Peralta. He's got a birthday coming up. He'll turn 33 in. What, three days. Reaches out and pops it up. Foul ground. First base side near the Cardinal dugout, and Goldie runs it down. So Randall Delgado comes in and strands two. We'll head to the gate. It's 2 nothing Cardinals. Here's what's next brought to you by Century Link. It's the top of the order, including Goldie. Goldie gone. Proudly supports Folds of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our country. For more information, visit FoxSportsSupports.com. New pitcher for the Cardinals as we start the eighth inning here at Bush Stadium, St. Louis. Steve Berthew, Bob Brenly, and Todd Walsh with you on this Memorial Day Monday. And it's left-hander. Kevin Segrist, he'll face the top of the Diamondback order in Ciarte Trumbo Goldie. Segrist has been really good for Mike Matheny this season. 19 and two-thirds innings, 24 strikeouts, held the opposition to a 200 batting average, carrying an ERA under one. 
fastball slider change up combination from the Cardinals lefty. You well, know, the Diamondbacks had no answers for Carlos Martinez, who worked seven innings, gave up only five hits, all singles. He had eight strikeouts, and they'll see what they can do here with the St. Louis bullpen. And Ciarte singled his last time up, one for three. Shows bunt and takes strike one. Ender, base hit. Into right center field. He's two for four, and the Diamondbacks have the leadoff man aboard here in the game. In front of a big crowd here at Bush Stadium on this Memorial Day. Old Park Village is packed right across the street. 42,853. Another sellout. The Cardinals here and are playing their 21st home game. And they have sold out every game this year, at least 40,000. That's the ballpark village across the street here, the new fan complex. Mark Trumbo. That was just dead area out there. It was an empty parking lot, actually. Uh, it's across the street behind left center field, and they spent a couple of years building it, and boy, did they do a marvelous job. You've got restaurants out there. That's the view from the rooftop out there at ballpark village. Kind of built a, a mini Wrigley field in that sense out there. With that hit for Ender Inciarte, another 0 2 base hit by the Diamondbacks. Their third today, second in the game by Ender. Got to take advantage here. A 1 1 count on Trumbo is 0 for 3. Mark is really fighting right now. Yeah, he really is chasing a lot of bad breaking balls from righties. And I mean, that is a fastball that normally Mark Trumbo would put a charge on right there. Inside part of the plate, middle of the thighs. He usually hits that to ballpark village. But he's down a ball and two strikes. Hits it in the air to center field, hit deep to center field, and it's gone, a home run! Mark Trumbo, a two-run shot, his seventh, and the Diamondbacks have come back to tie the ball game. Well, he missed the previous pitch. He got every bit of that one, a home run to dead center at Bush. How about that? He just needed it down a little bit more. We talked about it earlier this season. Mark's been getting on those high fastballs and getting base hits, but when he hits for power, it's usually pitches that are down there around the knees or lower. Golf that one out of here to straightaway center. Yeah, we've seen him, Bob, do that so many times. He gets so much spin on that ball. What looks to be just a routine line drive or a fly ball just carries and carries and keeps going up and out. And we've seen Mark hit home runs like that a number of times this year. What a big hit for Mark Trumbo, and it's a whole brand new ball game on this Memorial Day. One and zero to Goldie. You know, it's interesting. I know Segris has got crazy good numbers, but and I know Inciarte a lefty led off the inning, but I, I would rather have, I would think, a righty against Trumbo and Goldie. Yeah, you would think so. Who can hurt you a lot more than Inciarte and Peralta, the two lefties in the top quarter of the order here. But Matheny decided he wanted the left-hander, and Trumbo burned him for his seventh home run. And Segris is behind on Goldie, two and one. Look at the location of this Seekers fastball. The 
Yadier is reaching down. The pitch is down below the knees, but he gets those arms extended, got the barrel on the ball, and carried it out of here to straightaway center. Three balls and a strike. Ball four. A single, a home run, and a walk to lead off the eighth for the Diamondbacks. And here comes Peralta. Seegers is another one of those guys that has the, the backward splits. Righty's only hitting 170 going into play today. Lefty's hitting 261. Maybe that's why I went with him. And Ciarte single. Trumbo, a homer to tie it. A walk to gold again. Here's Peralta who walked his last time up. He's 0 for 2. Right hander throwing in quickly in the Cardinal bullpen. Carpenter will come in on the grass at third. Peralta shows, but takes strike one. I think against a right handed pitcher, David would probably be swinging away in this situation, but against the lefty showing butt there on the first pitch before taking a called strike. Peralta continues to struggle against left hand pitching. This for big Mark Trumbo. Granted, he's been swinging at some bad pitches lately, but this is his 11th game as a number two hitter in the lineup. He's got five homers and 10 driven in in those 11 games. It's so nice when you get that production at the top of your order like that. A lot of managers, it seems, have started to really like the idea of having a guy that can hit you a home run up in that one or two spot, kind of gets you a quick run up there. And especially when you're on the road because it puts the starting pitcher in that immediate position of having to think, uh oh, I got to be careful with this guy right away, right out of the gate. And it puts the pitcher on the defensive. The 0 1. Tell you what, 42,000 plus just got a lot quieter here. Yeah, you know, they were cruising along with a two to nothing lead, which, you know, shouldn't seem like much, but Martinez had been so dominant all afternoon. You just didn't know where the Diamondbacks were going to scratch together two runs to tie the game. But once Martinez came out of the ball game, new life for the D backs. Just had to wear him down. Two balls and a strike to David. They're also playing. This is a great time to play the Cardinals. I know they're rolling now. They got a three and a half game lead over the Cubs atop the division. But this is a tired ball club. They, they did not get any favors at all from the schedule makers to start the year. In fact, this series will end a stretch for Mike Matheny's team, during which they will have played 36 games in 37 days. And Matheny called it the most unfavorable section of schedule he's ever been a part of. They opened up with 20 games in a row. And then 16 of 17 right behind that. They finally will get a day off after this three game series on Thursday. And guess what? That's the day that Matheny has a charity golf tournament scheduled and all the players are expected to be there. But this is a tired team right now, despite the fact they're Three and a half up on the Cubs atop the central. Two and two. Got a whole parade of righties coming up, as Bob mentioned a moment ago, starting with Tomas, who's on deck. Seager still has not retired a batter. And he's. After walking Goldie gone full on Peralta. Three balls and two strikes. Ball four. Close pitch back to back walks. Good at bat there by David who worked the walk against the lefty and that's going to be it for secrets. There's some booze from the crowd here at Bush Stadium. Just off of that outside corner, maybe a hair down. Yadier Molina tried to make it look better than it really was, but the Diamondbacks have a couple guys on with nobody out. 
They have tied the ball game, threatening more. Pitching change back after this from St. Louis. is brought to you in part by USAA. For those who gave everything that we may breathe free, we honor you. Memorial Day Monday under the arch in St. Louis. Steve Berthume, Bob Brentley, and Todd Walsh with you. Diamondbacks should come back to tie it up and threatening more here in the eighth with two on and nobody out. And it's the right-hander Seth Maness to face Yasmani Tomas his 23rd appearance big time strike thrower relies heavily on a sinking fastball gets nearly three ground ball outs for every fly ball out Paul Goldschmidt is the runner at second David Peralta at first two runs in on the Trumbo Homer nobody out and here's Tomas who's two for three he's now hit safely in nine straight and the one thing you like here Bob in this matchup is Yasmani's ability to hit right hand pitching. Yeah, absolutely. It's among the best in the league so far against Rhinies in nearly 370. And single twice against right hander Carlos Martinez earlier in the ballgame. Lifts it in the air to right field. Hayward near the line. Goldie at second. He will bluff and hold. Hayward has got a tremendous throwing up. That's the first out here in the eighth. Brings up Chris Owings. CO was 0 for 19 before a single in the fifth. He's 1 for 3. He has also today grounded into a double play and struck out. He's at 237 on the year. I mentioned Manus is a ground ball machine. Go back to the beginning of the 2013 season. He's had 31 double plays induced, most in the majors. So I guess you could say he's their version of Brad Ziegler. You need a ground ball, he's your guy. Nothing doing at second base. Just keep Goldie close there. And they're looking for that grounder right here. Owen squares to bunt, which is. Well out of the strike zone, and it's 1-0 to CO. Ender and Ciarte led off the inning with a base hit single. Trombo came up and hit his seventh home run of the year to dead center to tie it. Goldie walked Peralta walk. Main is in. And after getting Tomas to fly out, he's behind on Owings, 1-0. Oh. Hey, Yadi did all the talking in that mound on the, or meeting on the mound, rather. Colton Wong came in from second base, wanted to be a part of it, and Yadi just kind of turned his back on the second base and said, stay out of this. Diamondback Live Post Game Show. 
after the ball game. Another bunt attempt. Owings. Carpenter comes in. Bear hands it from third. Close play, but they got him. And a runner's advance. You got to believe that that CO trying to bunt for a base hit right there. I mean, Carpenter didn't come all the way in where you normally see the third baseman when they take the bunt away. So CO gave it a shot, but. Took a nice play to get it. He scored a sacrifice 5 3. Second and third, two outs now for Tuffy. Tuffy walked his last time up. He's 0 for 2. And we saw Martinez all afternoon pounding Tuffy inside on the corner and off the plate inside. Everything in, in, in. See if Manus does the same thing. That's the strike call. Just caught the outer half and it's 0 2. Tuffy trying to extend a six game hitting streak. Got him. Diving back strand two, but they get to to tie the ball game. Mark Trumbo, there it goes to deep center field, his seventh, and we're tied at two. Pens and Stephen Bob. Uh, not sure if we're going to see Daniel Hudson today for the Arizona Diamondbacks. We were told before the start of the game a game time decision now, and that's based on a, a scary moment that took place during batting practice. Daniel Hudson struck in the chin with a batted ball during the Cardinals BP session, but he did pass the concussion test, the concussion protocol. So a game time decision for him, but we don't see him out in that Diamondbacks bullpen. All right, so they got some good news there. Thank you very much, Todd. So there might be a man short back there here in this one as Randall Delgado was out there again after getting the final out in the bottom of the seventh to open up the eighth against Yadier Molina. Jason Hayward and Peter Borges behind him. Molina so far 0 for 3. We talked about Molina earlier in the ballgame hitting two situations depending on where the weakness in the defense was. Usually when he leads off an inning, he's looking to hit the ball out of the ballpark. One and one. He's on a big offensive upswing lately, last 19 games, hitting almost 360. Randall bounces that one. It's two balls in a strike. It's amazing how good an offensive player Yadier Molina has developed into Bob over the years. He was all love early, but to the last seven, eight years or so, he's been one of the better offensive players in the league. Always over 300. Certainly among catchers. 
Very shallow left. Ahmed fighting that son. Well, now that he's a little more advanced in years and physically he can't do some of the things he used to do, especially behind the plate. But there was a time four or five years ago, if you were starting an expansion team and had the number one pick in the draft, I'm not so sure Yadier Molina wouldn't have been that guy. Seven gold gloves, two World Series rings, and a Hall of Fame regiment. Jason Hayward now, and the shift is on. Tomas will move from third over to second, right on the edge of the dirt there. And Owings backs up in a shallow right. Hayward an RBI single in the fourth. And he looks at ball one. Not easy to beat these guys in this ballpark. The Cardinals are 15 and 5 at home this year. And this is the first game of a nine game homestand. One and two. Hey, fans, enter now for a chance to win a trip to the MLB All Star game on Fox for you and three of your friends. Just upload two photos. FoxSports.com slash Fantastic All-Star now through June 3rd. Boy, the RBI single that Hayward had in the fourth, just his 13th RBI all year. Sun out on the right side of the field right now is really going to be an issue. Mark Trumbo, Chris Owings with the shift on Yasmani Tomas, Paul Goldschmidt all looking right into that afternoon sun. That one's in the dirt and he's running full three balls and two strikes. You've got the shadows from the light standards along the third baseline all over the field, but uh, some cloud cover now. Mostly blue sky above, but when the sun is out, it is really on the right fielder. Got him. Hayward strikes out, two down. A good motion on that changeup, fading down low and away from the left-handed hitter. Looks like it's going to be in the strike zone. Late movement takes it way low and away. Good pitch. Delgado has retired all three he's faced so far. Two outs for Borges, who singled his last time up. He's one for three. And he's at 253 on the year. Does have a home run. Drives it to center. And Ciarte has to hold up. You don't want that ball getting behind you with Borges' speed in the bases. So Ender will play it safe. It's a two out single. And here comes the pitcher spot. And this time we will see Randall Pritchett. Borges two for four. And here's Gritchick, 250 with a homer. This is a young guy that can really barrel up a baseball. Very athletic out there. Tremendous raw power. It's in there. But the downside on him is Mike Harkey comes out to the mound, and he'll probably tell Randall Delgado this, is that Gritchick is a big-time free swinger. He will strike out a lot and take his hacks. But when he connects, it goes. Enrique Burgos talking to Mel Stottlemyre Jr. out there, the bullpen coach. part of this conversation not only the scouting report on Gritchick but also to keep an eye on Borges over there at first base as a general rule you don't like to run when you send a pinch hitter into the game you want that guy at the plate to have an opportunity to swing the bat but Borges has blazing speed on the bases we'll see how Mike Matheny wants to play this Gritchick has a pinch hitter 250 Borges with four stolen bases this year he has been caught three times and Tuffy today has already thrown out Colton Wong trying to steal. That was back in the fifth. 
Boy, Borges, when he gets his lead, really leans toward the second base bag. That's something that I think he brought over from the Anaheim Angels with him. That they open up that front foot, exaggerated, kind of point the toe toward second base so they can really open up that front hip. And once Delgano comes set, he starts to lean, and he's back at first. Yeah, get all the weight on that right foot. So if you are stealing, your first move is a crossover. Drive off that right foot, crossover with the left. That's as quick as you can get into your running motion towards second base. You don't want Randall in this situation to put so much focus on the base runner that he makes a mistake in location to Gritchick, who will hit it a long way. If he gets a hanger. Of his hits, 11 hits on the season, eight of them for extra bases, five doubles, two triples, and a homer. And he's still trying to get into the flow of this season. He missed a full month with a lower back strain, was out 27 games. Just came back about a week or so ago. 1 0 pitch, there goes Borges. The throw from Tuffy is in time. They got him. Tuffy goes a wish. He threw out Wong in the fifth, and he gets Borges here to win the eighth. And they're telling the Diamondbacks to stay on the field for the moment while Mike Matheny checks the replay. And there will be no challenge. He is out at second, caught stealing, and that ends the eighth. And that is the end of the inning. So we go to the ninth on Memorial Day in a 2-2 ball game at Bush Stadium. Looked like he had a great slide there, Bob, on that play into second, caught stealing to end the inning. Yeah, very late in his slide to second base, and Tuffy on an off speed pitch. That was a breaking ball on the inside part of the plate to a right handed hitter. You cannot unload it any quicker than Tuffy did and put the throw right on the money. He has been so good back there lately. He sends us to the ninth, new pitcher for the Cardinals. The hard throwing right hander, it's Trevor Rosenthal, an ERA, how about that, in 20 appearances of .89. But uh, Segrist had similar numbers, and all four Diamondback hitters he faced. Reach base, changes behind Rosenthal for the Cardinals defensively. Randall Gritchick stays in the ball game. He replaces Borges in center field. He'll hit ninth pitcher spot, now eighth in the Cardinal lineup. So Rosenthal faces Nick Ahmed. To lead off the ninth. And the pitcher spot up behind Nick. A.J. Pollock is in the on deck circle. He would hit for Delgado. 0 1 to Ahmed. 
0 for 3 so far, trying to extend his hitting streak. Nick has hit safely in his last nine games, but he's down, no balls and two strikes, and Rosenthal, as he usually does, is up there just under 100. Flame on, average fastball at 97 this year. Has a change up, has a slider, doesn't usually need him very often. Ninety eight just gets a piece to stay alive. He's got thirteen saves tied for second in the National League. Nick reaches down and pops it up second base Wong wants it. Born away. Tuffy goes to wish defensively, making our Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool plays of the game. Yeah, that one a tough pitch to handle to throw out a guy at second base, but he's able to gun down the runner Colton Wong easily, and this one a little bit tougher. Hanging breaking ball on the inside part of the plate, an off-speed pitch, but right on the money to get the speedy Peter Borges. The red hot AJ Pollock will hit for Delgado with one out. First pitch swing and pops him up again. Foul ground. Molina's under it. Two down. Well, AJ, 12 for his last 24 up there is an easy out number two. Brings up Ender in Ciarte. Ender two for four. He has singled in his last two at bats. He scored a run, came in on the Trumbo two run homer that tied it in the eighth. Mark seventh of the year, he would be next. Well, there's just no let up from Rosenthal. 97, 98, 98. Or 99. It can get worse. According to one of the websites that keeps track of such statistics, his changeup is 87, 88. Which is what, about five miles an hour faster than a Josh Coleman or fastball? Well, this is a guy against whom you think Ender could just do what he does and slap one down that left field line. Let it get a little deeper. It gets deep in a hurry at 98. One and two. Round to the shortstop, right to Peralta. And Rosenthal works a one, two, three inning. We are tied at two, bottom nine coming up.
That was the Cox Gig Life High Speed Highlights. Bottom nine at Bush Stadium in St. Louis on this Memorial Day Monday. And big Enrique Burgos has made his way in from the Diamondback bullpen in a 2 2 ball game. Numbers on Burgos this year is 13th appearance, an ERA just over four and a half. And there might be something wrong here. Ryan DePanfalo, the assistant trainer, is out there. Along with Chip Hale and Mike Hartke. They must have seen something in his throwing motion they didn't like because Burgos sort of has this look. What are you doing here? I'm fine. Let's see. This was his last warm up toss. Uh, shaking that right arm out just a little bit. Always a red flag for a pitching coach and a trainer. They just wanted to come out and make sure Burgos was okay. Well, he'll work to Randall Gritchick here to open up the ninth inning. And it's Colton Wong and Matt Carpenter. 2 2 ball game. Gritchick was the pinch hitter when Borges was thrown out by Tuffy Gozawish trying to steal to win the eighth inning. He stayed in the game and took over in center field for Borges. First pitch swinging is in the seats. It's Illinois. 95 from Burgos. Gritchick. Drafted out of high school in Rosenberg, Texas by the Angels. First round pick in 09, 250 on a year. And you will get him to chase. He will expand the strike zone. When he connects, it will go. He can barrel up a baseball. One and two. Shoots it out to Peralta in left field, and the wing runs aboard for the Cardinals to lead off the ninth. Slider on the outside part of the plate. Richard gets out and around it. Hooks that line drive back to left field to get the Cardinals leadoff man on base here for the top of the batting order. And that's Colton Wong, who's two for four. Doubled and scored in the first, singled in the fifth. Top ten in the league in hitting at 319. Tomas will come in from third. Goldie holding Gritchick on the bag at first. The Cardinals only have one sack bunt from a position player all season long, and it's not Colton Wong. Yadier Molina put down a sack bunt. Shadows all over the infield right now. Up the middle. Base hit. Hit too hard right near the second base back for the Diamondbacks to have a chance to turn two there. It was by Ahmed at shortstop for the first two half reach for Matt Carpenter. I thought Burgos might have had a play on this one. It just kind of bounces up and over his head. He doesn't even get the glove up in self defense. That one gets on through in the center field for a base hit. Winning run at second base. Still nobody out, and Carpenter comes up two for four. Chip Hale to the mound now. He's got J.C. Ramirez warming. They might have had Ramirez get up after they went out to visit Burgos after that final warm-up pitch, and Chip will take the baseball. So J.C. Ramirez inherits a mess. 2-2, two -two, ninth inning, nobody out. Back after this.
Well, here's J.C. Ramirez, who did a very good job in a relief appearance Saturday in the loss to the Cubs out there for the sixth time this year. Ramirez came on to start the seventh inning, retired the first five Chicago batters he faced, gave up a single to Starlin Castro before the back end of the bullpen let that game get away. Turned out to be a 9-6 Cubs win, but Ramirez looked good, and he inherits a big-time mess here with nobody out in the ninth. Richick is the winning run at second. Wong aboard at first. And Carpenter, the hitter, he is singles and is in the first and the fifth. And he looks at strike one. Yeah, a little bit of uncertainty for the Diamondbacks defensively. This is a situation of many times you'll see a manager use a sack bunt, move both runners into scoring position. But no sign of a bunt that time for Matt Carpenter. The Cardinals just don't bunt a lot. They'll bunt with their pitcher, but they don't like to give away outs with their position players. And this is one of the best hitters in the National League. Ahead, no balls and two strikes. And given the fact Carpenter is 10 for 22, that's a 455 batting average with runners in scoring position this year. He's not up there to put down a bunt. Richick is the winning run at second. Colton Wong aboard at first. No action in the Diamondback bullpen. Catcher's range comes into play again there. That was nearly a wild pitch to the backstop. Duffy had to come out of the crouch, reach way up and back to his left to keep that one from hitting the bricks behind home plate. One and two. J.C. Ramirez gets a big out number one. Cut fastball on that inside corner. Looked like a strike to Carpenter, but by the time he got the bat to the hitting zone, he was over the top of the pitch for strike three. Looking for a ground ball right here as Matt Holiday steps in. He has singles his last two times up. He's two for four. Another guy with crazy numbers with runners in scoring position. Ninety five from Ramirez is fouled off and it's 0 1. Matt Adams is on deck. Holiday seven walk offs in his career. The last one. Coming nearly two years ago. Now we've seen this before with the runner at second base and Tuppy and now talking to Nick Ahmed. Nick Ahmed relaying to Chris Owens. They're probably changing the signs with the runner Gritchick down there at second base peering in at Tuppy. See if he even gives a sign to Ramirez right here. Many times you'll just go out to the mound and verbally say hey throw me another fastball inside throw me a slider away whatever the pitch happens to be. Yep, Tuffy's going to give some signs this time, so let's see what they settle on here. And a long look into the dugout before that sign. 0 oh 2 on Holiday. Got him! J.C. Ramirez, another big punch out, two down. Another 
elevated fastball up there around the letters out over the plate just blew it right by Matt Holliday. He's thrown seven pitches six of them strikes. He got Carpenter he got a holiday and now he'll work to Matt Adams. Bottom nine two on two out two two ball game. Adams singled and scored in the fourth. He walked his last time up. He's also got an RBI ground up. AC Ramirez, big dude out there, 6'4, 250, pitched very well for Phil Nevin and Reno this year before he was called up. 11 scoreless appearances, all in relief. He's a strike away from a complete Houdini act here. That one for a ball. It's one and two. This is a matchup of some big boys. Oh, yeah. Big City and J.C. Ramirez. Got about 500 pounds of beef going head to head. <laughs> a ball and two strikes. Two and two. Richick is the runner at second. Long aboard at first. Two on and two out. that strike zone 2 2 count on the hitter two outs in the inning you don't want those runners on base in motion on a full count pitch Ramirez with another 96 mile an hour heater on the inner third of the plate fouled away by Adams Two on, nobody out, Jam, and he strikes out the side. He got Carpenter. He got Holiday, and he rings up Big City. We're going to extras in St. Louis.
beef jerky all season long. Jack Link's beef jerky. Feed your wild side. Feed it. Oh, well, we're going to make this a habit here lately, BB. <laughs> Better order more beef jerky. <laughs> oh, beef jerky time. Well, Lance Barksdale, Bob, been calling that low strike all day. Yeah, watch how tough he receives this pitch again. Just ever so subtly turned his wrist to make that ball look a little bit higher than it really was. You know who would appreciate that is Joe Gargiola Sr. This is old stomping grounds here in St. Louis, and he loves those catchers that can make borderline pitches look good. Pitch framing. Diamondbacks in six extra inning games so far, a record of four and two. Trumbo, a big reason why we're here. And he leads off the 10th against Trevor Rosenthal. This was Mark in his last at bat, eighth inning. Getting that spin on the ball, and it goes out to straightaway center. Cardinals playing extras for the seventh time, or eighth time, pardon me, this season. They're four and three so far. Mark lifts that high in the air to shortstop. Peralta's under it. One down into the 10th. Here's Goldie. Paul Goldschmidt a single in the first a walk in the eighth. He's one for three. So Rosenthal their closer out there for his second inning. Dropped in the hole. Carpenter in front of Peralta. Goldie beats it out. A swing and bunt base hits. And he's aboard for the third time today. And look how deep the Cardinals infield is on that left side. Respecting Goldie's power. And then he just chopped a little dribbler to the left side there. Nobody can get to it quickly enough. But with his speed, Goldie able to leg it out for an infield hit. A one out base runner for David Peralta. David this afternoon 0 for 2. He's walked twice. This one, Bob. This is the third straight series. As I go back through my book here for the Diamondbacks, that the first game of the series has gone to extras. How about that? Miami, the weekend uh, at home at Chase Field against the Cubs. And now here in St. Louis. So don't make any plans Friday night in Milwaukee, I guess, huh? Good call. Not that you can. Sprouts will have to wait. <laughs> National League Central Tour right now for the D-backs. Three against the Cubs, three against the Cardinals, three against the Milwaukee Brewers. That series starts on Friday. Off day on Thursday. But I guess he didn't go. No appeal down to third, and it's 3-0. Four. A single and a walk in the tenth against Rosenthal. Two on, one out for Yasmani Tomas. Third consecutive walk in the ball game for David Peralta. Hopefully a sign he's seeing pitches a little bit better, laying off those ones out of the zone. Diamondbacks so far in the ball game, 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. Tomas today, two for four, a pair of singles. Now with a nine game hitting streak. This is the time for him to shoot one down the right field line. And they're giving him a lot of room right down the line. Matt Adams playing way over in the hole between first and second. 
That should also give David Peralta an opportunity to get a huge lead and a secondary lead and make sure to break up a double play. Do not allow the Cardinals to turn two. One and oh. He's good late in ball games. Been good at any point lately. Seventeen for his last forty up there. Ninety-eight right by him. It's one and one. A little tardy that time. Diamondbacks had a chance to tack on some runs after that Trumbo homer in the eighth. Goldie walked Peralta walk. They had two on, nobody out, but Maynus came in, got Tomas to fly out. Owings to sacrifice bunt, and then he struck out goes who wished to strand two. Reaches down, lifts it in the air to right field. Hayward coming in, he won't get there. Goldie had to hold up. Andy Green started pumping that arm around, then put the brakes on at the last minute. He really wanted to send Goldie there. Started to windmill and then stopped. And the Diamondbacks with one out have the bases loaded. Tomas his third hit today. Diamondbacks have nine hits in the ball game today. Seven of those have come with two strikes on the hitter. This one by Tomas, just a cue shot off the end of the bat that drops in front of Hayward in right field. I think Andy Green thought Hayward was going to overrun that ball. It kind of took a funny bounce out yeah, there in right field. Andy kind of hopped out of our picture there. Hayward has a tremendous throwing arm. And Andy certainly aware of that. Not going to take any chances here. And so the Diamondbacks have them loaded for Chris Owings. Three hits on 0 2 counts, four hits on 1 2 counts. CO can find a gap here and bust this thing open. Both bullpens are busy. Well, Meraki, Matt Belial up for St. Louis. Brad Ziegler throwing for the Diamondbacks. He would be the closer again. Bases full, one out. Owings a sacrifice bunt is the last time up. He singled back in the fifth. Owings at the first pitch and fouls it off. 0 and 1. Corners playing in for the Cardinals. The middle infielder is not quite all the way in. If they get a hard hit ball, they might try to turn two up the middle of the field. Goldschmidt at third, Peralta at second, Tomas at first. 98, CO. Again, 0 and 2. Lately for Chris, he gets out of bed, he's down 0 and 2. <laughs> Sure, it feels that way. Goes a wish on deck. Got him. 100 miles an hour, and he rings him up. Man, that's just the express right there. Rare back and throw it as hard as you can right for the middle of the plate. CO could not pull the trigger. Well, it's up to Tuffy. Diamondbacks, keep in mind, the best team in baseball. And driving in runs with two outs. The Diamondbacks have 94 two out runs this year, the most in the major leagues. Tuffy walked in the seventh, 0 for 3. 99 in there for a strike.
Bounce to second. Colton Wong. And the Diamondbacks leave the bases loaded. Bottom 10 coming up. We're still tied in St. Louis. J.C. Ramirez back out there for the 10th after one of the best relief innings we have seen all year. He came into the ball game in the ninth, tied up, two on, nobody out, and struck out Carpenter, Holiday, and Adams to end the threat. Two of those guys hitting over 450 with runners in scoring position. What an effort by J.C. Ramirez. And Peralta will lead off the 10th for the Cardinals. Johnny Peralta, Yadier Molina, and Jason Hayward, 5, 6, and 7 in the St. Louis order. Peralta has singled and walked today, 1 for 3. This has kind of been the story for J.C. Ramirez so far this season. Uh, hasn't pitched a lot since his recall from the minor leagues, but he stranded 10 of the 12 base runners he's inherited when he's come into the ball game. And this is a guy that did not even pitch in the big leagues last year. Spent most of last season in the minors in the Cleveland organization. In double A and triple A. 0 and 2. Ramirez is only previous major league experience 18 games with the Phillies two years ago and he went 0 and 1 with an ERA of seven and a half. Signed as a minor league free agent with the Diamondbacks last December had a good spring. And has been terrific so far. Drives it deep to left. And that's the walk-off homer. The Cardinals win it. Johnny Peralta, his seventh. And Memorial Day, it's a walk-off winner at Bush Stadium. the ups and downs of life as a major league relief pitcher J.C. Ramirez the highest of highs and now the lowest of lows. Yeah left a slider over the fat part of the plate. 
Peralta was out in front just a little bit, but cast it high in the air to left field and just does sneak it into the front row of the bleachers. And so the Cardinals get the walk off win here to open up what is a nine game homestand for them and they improve to 16 and five here at Bush Stadium this year. They win it 3 2 in 10 innings. Diamondback Live post game show is next here on Fox Sports Arizona. We'll have reaction from both clubhouses. Todd Walsh will talk to some Diamondbacks players. We'll have some more Memorial Day features for you as the D backs drop the opener of this three game set here at Bush Stadium. 3 2 to the Cardinals in 10 innings. Diamondbacks Live post game is next on Fox Sports Arizona.